we can all rise for the pledge, please. Chris, can you lead us to the pledge, sir? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We had a moment of silence for the men and women in the armed forces, our veterans, our first responders, those fighting the good fight in the Ukraine, and those four people that lost their lives and nine wounded in the shooting in Louisville. Thank you. Is there a nomination for a moderator? Nominee Mayor yeah. Bass. Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, yay. Mayor Pete, you thank, are. Thank you. And uh, this is uh, a special town meeting, and this is for uh, a notice uh, concerning, discuss and consider resolution uh, for uh, costs related uh, for uh, roof repairs and for roads. And this is for the approval for the funding. Doesn't mean we're going to use it all in one year. So if I could have uh, Jack Healy, he's our DPW director, if he could come up front and kind of give us an overview. We also have, I believe, uh, John Whitman. I thought I saw him here. Uh, he's our Municipal Roads Committee Chairman. They both could come up and talk a little bit about our program and how it's been going so far. Jack? Hey there. I believe that the, uh, the call is for five million, authorization for $5 million for roofs and $10 million for roads. And that's it, just authorization. Does right. not mean we are going to expend it this year. It just gives you a chance uh, over years to fund that fund that uh, infrastructure work yeah it's a proper way to do this the town council authorizes and then the town can go forward and bond it as needed when a project comes up um, for the for the roofs we are, we are doing roof studies on many buildings in the town um, so that we can have a coordinated managed process for replacing roofs um, I, I don't like to do things knee-jerk like and we like to have it planned out I'm used to doing that from when I was in private industry. So we have a, a plan going forward, and the mayor's talked to us about that. So the first re the first request for an authorization was for $5 million. We are looking at a couple of school roofs plus a few of the town roofs, all, town uh, building roofs also. And that plan, once we get done with the, the studies, will be given to the mayor, and we'll start to review that. The roads is an ongoing uh, process. Uh, that, that was started before I became public, uh, public works director. Been going on for, I think, five years now. Um, and we, we request a certain amount of money each year to do, um, we do several roads, we do it different ways. Either we do a reclamation, which is where we grind up the road and we completely rebuild it, including drainage and, and uh, removing trees and curbing and things like that. The other things we do, sometimes we do a chip seal or we do uh, just drainage or we do a, a mill and pave. Normally the chip seal comes out of the operating budget and the mill and pave comes out of the, the bonded money. Uh, each year, the road committee, uh, John and, and the road committee, works with the public works department and with the, with the mayor, and we come up with a list of roads to be done. Actually, we have a list of roads going out for the next five years, so it's just we just re review that and we uh, we agree upon that. Typically, we've been re reclaiming or re repaving about eight miles of roads per year, and then we chip seal between 10 and 20 miles per roads per year. So every year, we do between 20 and 30 miles of roads. So at this point, you're, we're up to about half, not quite half the roads in the Milford have been touched in the last five years. Um, Maybe. And that's the reason for the request for authorization. Thank you. Sal, do we have any other people in the public that would like to speak uh, at this town meeting? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, Ms. Erickson. Pat Erickson, 65 Buckingham Road, New Milford. Good evening, Mayor and members of the Town Council. Um, I'm here tonight to hope and pray that you pass the money for the roads. Um, I will tell you that our road is deplorable at this point, and it's not from the lack of, from the help of Mike Boucher and Jack. They have done everything they can possibly do to make it so it's somewhat drivable, but the road hasn't been, had anything done to it except a chip ceiling once probably about 10 years ago when the guy did it, it wasn't our town guys, he said this isn't even gonna last a year. So right now it's, it's more craters than it is potholes. And I will say, you know, you call them up or you send them to click it, fix it, 
and they do the very best that they can, but it's beyond the pothole machine. It, it just really needs to be redone now, and I'm, I'm hoping that you'll be able to approve the money tonight to get the job done. Thank you very much Thank for your you time. Matt. Thank you. Matt. Anybody else, Al? Mr. Bill? I, put, I cannot, oh, I don't know, the, the, the last one cannot pronounce it. Yeah, this one. Oh, yes. Thank you. Mr. Finnegan, are you for the roads or for the? Both. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. We're having a bridge put in on Upland Road. Yes, sir. Just your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Bill Finnegan, 55 Upland Road, New Milford, Connecticut. Best town in the USA. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I borrowed that from, <laughs> but it's true. Um, at the hearings they had prior to that, there was mentioning of, and it was Gambino and a couple other neighbors that rely on that Upland Road. As far as signage, and I'm sure El Sandro, signage telling people how to get up to my farm stand with that road being closed, and also to Gambino's down there along the road, and then Hunt Hill. So can you check and verify that that will be Absolutely. Or they could do so. Jack, can you, I know we have a plan in place for that. Could you opine for the public as to what we're going to be doing on Upland? How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Yeah, we're, the Upland Road Bridge will be closed as of May 1st. Right. Um, we have a sign out there now just to inform people that, that that's going to occur. The contractor will shortly be putting up detour signs, identifying the routes away, around to make sure that we can get to, uh, people know how to get to, Mr. Gambino's and, and everybody's. Um, Finnegan's Farm West? Uh, well, the road will it'll tell people how to detour. It will lead them up to Upland Road and uh, around that way. Okay. okay. We'll also put it on our social media it's, site yep. so that everyone's aware of how to get around there. And yeah. uh, we're also going to send some, I believe, some letters to some of the abutting neighbors. Yeah, right? I think that's have already gone. The letters Perfect. went out to everybody within a mile of the road. Um, it is, I believe it's already been put on the public works site. Um, I think you were going to put it on your yep. site. Um, and the contract is responsible for making sure that the, the detour is well maintained and well laid out. So, awesome. Okay. Thank you very, Thank very you. much. Anyone else, Sal? No more public participation. Okay. And, and right. we'll... Any questions from the councilman? Chris? Just one, Mayor. We, we've used pretty much the same process successfully in the yes, past, sir. right? Of all okay. the, every year since I've been mayor, this is exactly how we've been doing it. Great. Thank you. Yep. And the outcome's been very positive. Half the road. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Half the road so far. Yeah. Jack and his team. And municipal building committee. All right. I'd like to take a vote. All those in favor of the appropriating five million in authorization and ten million in roads signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All those in oh, we already did that. So I'd like to take a motion to close. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. The next meeting is going to be at 645, and that's to address ARPA funding for the silo. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat>
Are these new? Are these new pictures that trees that died? Okay. All right. Could all rise for the pledge, please? <coughs> Katie, can you leave some pledge? Certainly. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A moment of silence for the men and women in the armed forces, our veterans, first responders, those fighting the good fight in the Ukraine, and the four people that lost their lives and nine injured in today's shooting in Louisville. Thank you. Is there a nomination for a moderator? Uh, I nominate Mayor Bass. Second. Second. All those in favor of Mayor Bass say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Okay. Mayor Bass, you are then. Moderator. Thank you very much. Next is a uh, call. And uh, this is for uh, those qualified to vote in the town meeting. Town of New Milford are hereby warned and notified to meet at the New Milford Town Hall, 10 Main, New Milford, Connecticut, on April 10th, 6.45 p.m. in the E. Paul Martin Room. For the following purposes to wit, to consider and act upon the following question. Shall the Town of New Milford expend COVID Relief American Rescue Plan funds received from the United States Treasuries as follows, to the silo $107,500. <coughs> Sal, do we have anybody from public participation that would like to talk to the meeting? Yes, Mr. May. Uh, Paul Chaika? Mr. Paul Chaika. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. I'm Paul Chaika. I reside at 31 Cortland Drive in New Milford. I am the co-founder and director of Robotics and Beyond, which is a nonprofit educational organization in town here. And I just want to um, give you an idea of the impact that the silo has had on our organization and the young people that we serve and their families. Uh, in just over two summers, the past two summers, um, we have held just uh, four, two, three, four, five topics, five camps of a week long each at the silo. Over two, period, two weeks, five different topics. And because we were able to hold them there in that space and with not being charged uh, by the silo for use of the facilities. We had uh, 22 students attend those camps. They um, paid a total of $4,000 in camp fees to Robotics and Beyond, which went back to my instructors, who are high school and college students. And we were able to allow four students to attend programs for free or at half price, and they never would have been able to attend otherwise. Um, in a single event at Hunt Hill, um, uh, two Octobers ago, we made uh, a fella introduced himself to me after he heard what I had to say about what we do. That connection turned into a employment opportunity for one of my graduates who was in college studying electrical engineering. And that connection turned into a essentially a co-op opportunity for him that lasted about 14 months and he earned $17,000 from that. Now those are kind of highlights of things. But that's just an illustration of the impact that a, a resource like that, that a town like New Milford is so lucky to have, the impact that it can have. So I want to make that very clear. Having accessibility to, uh, for the bathroom and having the kitchen facilities upgraded like that, uh, you, you don't need much imagination to get a handle on the additional programs that Alessandro will be able to offer and the people that can come to it. I don't want to have to, to be able to tell, a, um, to have to tell a parent when they explain to me any special needs that they have of a child who wants to attend one of our programs that I'm sorry we don't have bathroom facilities that will accommodate your child. So we, I mean, what's worth to avoid situations like that? We want every child possible to attend the programs we have. And it's a great resource and uh, I think it makes total sense for that expenditure. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Uh, so good evening, Mr. Mayor, Town Council, members of the Town Council here. Um, I just want to say that, oh, I'm sorry, I'll get used to it. Alessandro Piovesan, 81 Crossman Road, New Milford, Connecticut, best town in USA, water from my neighbor, Bill. And Mayor Bass here. 
Um, April 1st was three years that we officially uh, took control of the Silo Hunt Hill Farm. And now we have Easter and all this good stuff going on. And we've been through COVID and things are just working in different ways now. I'm so happy with the new level of partnership and collaboration we're achieving here. And I mean, Paul Chaika is one of the, <laughs> the best speakers I know. Thank you, Paul. And always uh, fill my eyes with tears. My heart is filled with excitement and I'm, I, I usually talk a lot, but you know that here I'm getting lost. I just wanna say that I don't really know what's gonna to happen tonight, but I'm extremely happy and satisfied with the level of collaboration and support we've been receiving. And I hope you can do a lot more. So thank you very much for the opportunity and positive vibrations always. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Mr. Finnegan. Uh, Bill Finnegan, 55 Upland Road, New Milford, Connecticut. Um, I think it's great that we want to try and get the silo help any way we can. I understand we're going to vote to release some COVID money in an amount of $107,000 for a new bathroom. Um, does that also account for the septic system needing to be repaired? It would be uh, everything to bring them up to code, be kitchen. I guess there's some uh, steps that need to be redone, some awning work that needs to be done, some tree work that needs to be and done. there's enough money in there for there's the septics a long that we do yep, know has been failing list. for a while? Yes, Good. sir. Then I vote yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no more problems. So? Okay. And then we also received some uh, emails in, in uh, support so you had uh, dear mayor bass because we are unable to t to attend tonight's town meeting we're sending you this email to demonstrate our support for the hundred seven thousand dollar grant for capital improvements to the silo we think making those improvements will be the benefit to the town and all of the new milford residents and that is don turner and carolyn mitchell 21 vista drive uh, vincent rodriguez from smiles i can't see dot org Good morning, I would like to vote for the approval of the capital improvement grant for the silo, so he's in favor. I cannot attend the meeting this evening, but still voice my opinion via email. That's to Vincent. The next is uh, Sandra Hernandez. Um, she just said, we are, proud, we are proud to Milford residents at 29 Aspetuck Pines. And we'd like to let you know that we support the grant for the silo. A big thank you from all of us, the Giuseppe Hernandez Residentes. <coughs> then Heather Dietrich, uh, we have helped out at the silo for about 35 years now at the cooking school with all the guest instructors that they have had in the past few years. I've also helped with events. I have to say that this capital improvement grant would be great help to the silo. The cooking school area is in desperate need of upgrades and with the addition of an ADA compliant bathroom, it could potentially open the door for the cooking school to fully reopen. So I am saying yes to giving the money to the silo. And 2099 Dan Barry Road, Heather Dietrich. Sarah Gomente, if I'm mispronouncing your name, Sarah, if you're watching, I apologize. I support the silo and have greatly appreciated the programming efforts to connect all in the community and revere and respect the history of the space and its mission. I'm a resident of New Milford as of June 2022. And that's from Sarah. Mario Sagalu, I support the silo. Okay. <laughs> Tammy Clinton, uh, she also says, I'm sending this email in hopes the town will grant funding to the silo so they can expand its offerings to the community. The silo offers a diversified set of needs to our community, but with the additional funding, they would be able to grow their offerings. Thank you, Tammy Clinton. And Barry and Mary from Northville. Uh, Mayor Pete, esteemed council members and fellow citizens of New Milford. This June will mark three years since we moved to this wonderful town. The fulfillment of a decades-long plan to retire up north, we found our new home at 6 McNulty Drive in Northville. Access to nature combined with a sense of community were important factors that attracted us to New Milford. As we began our explorations of our new home town, a neighbor suggested the silo, so we made plans to visit. Little do we know that this would be a transformative experience. Alessandro greeted us, immediately making us feel welcome as he showed us around the grounds through the various buildings. 
In time, we came to know Alessandro and his mar f marvelous family better through our visits to the art exhibits, musical performances, outdoor drumming circles, and several community events held at the silo. Alessandro's vision for the legacy left to the town by the Hendersons to preserve the silo is an important resource for New Milford, where all are welcome to join in fellowship, is inviting and warrants all support we can muster. To this end, we very enthusiastically support the approval of the 107,000 capital improvement grant to help the silo. Very much look forward to meeting more of our fellow townsfolk at the future events to be held there. Thank you for this opportunity to express our support, uh, Barry and Barry Dinamit and Mary Antonelli from Northville. Lou Mandler, and uh, Lou is also our uh, chairperson of the uh, Commission on the Arts. Dear Mayor Bass, as a resident of the town of Milford at 90 Aspetuck Avenue, I support the approval of the $107,000 capital improvement grant to the silo. And Joan, again, if I mispronounce uh, the name, I apologize. Uh, Locus Paroski, 41 Second Hill Road, New Milford. Dear Council and Mayor Bass, I'm writing this letter of support as a passionate supporter of Hunt Hill Farm, the silo. My family unequivocally supports the town approving the $107,000 grant for the silo's necessary improvements. The silo at Hunt Hill Farm serves as a vital community resource. The legacy of the silo that Ruth and Skitch Henderson's beloved oasis is a fascinating part of New Milford's rich history as it continues on through the dedication, love, <coughs> and preservation of efforts of Alexandro and Danielli. The different programs offered at the silo has given the community an opportunity to experience the arts, music, technology, and cooking in a beautiful pres preserved historic setting. The tentative discussions to use these funds in part to allow for the cooking stool to, to fully reopen safely will be an amazing part of the rebirth of this New Milford iconic cooking school that once hosts such, such cooking pioneers as Julia Child and Martha Stewart. I am confident that all improvements made by Alessandro and Daniele will be made in a meticulous as well as measured manner to ensure the silo's authenticity and further maximize the benefits to our community. The silo truly deserves an extension of this beautiful community. Uh, Alessandro and Daniele have remarkably uh, collaborated with so many in the community and with other various nonprofit organizations, whether it's hosting a local Girl Scouts movie night, donating non-perishable food to help Camilla's cupboard, holding a wellness workshop for those affected by trauma, allowing a teen jewelry designer to display her first pieces, supporting a local author or upcoming artist, or hosting a fundraiser for the local high school. The silo is here to support you and your work. Those who have witnessed the efforts to rebuild the silo recognize how many more can be served in this community if we can continue to offer uh, Alexandra and Daniele both the monetary and community support that they so well deserve. Very truly yours, Joanne. Any questions from the council or any comments from the council? Chris? Yeah, just one. Um, you know, from, from my point of view, you know, the silo is, as many people express, an important asset to this community. And from what I know about the current facilities, using federal ARPA funds um, to do those upgrades, which I think are critical to the continued viability of the facility, just makes total sense. So I fully support it. Sal? I just want to second what all the people that, that say about the SIL. It's just a great place, and I think we should help them out as much as we can. It's a community center. At the end of the day, it's New Milford. As we know, the greatest of town in the USA. So I say yes to the ARPA funds for the silo. Thank you, Sal. Any other comments from the council? Katie? Well, I too um, heartily support the use of ARPA, particularly this meets the criteria. And having seen the silo go through lots of different phases when the Hendersons were here and everything was always positive and Alessandro has certainly come with the if not even more positive attitude. <laughs> so I think he's a good steward of what will happen there. So I would definitely say yes. Outstanding. So any other comments, Paul? I'm on record from previous meetings uh, supporting the silo and Alessandro. And I think uh, Skitch and uh, Ruth would be very happy this evening. Mm -hmm. So please, uh, please support the silo. Okay. Any other comment? Well, we're going to take a vote. All those in favor of uh, allowing the town to uh, uh, 
expend $107,500 of ARPA funding to the silos, signify by saying yes. 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 Aye. Any not in favor, please raise your hand or signify by saying no. Okay. Motion passes. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Our next reg our regular meeting is going to be 7 p.m., which I believe we're right here. Look at that. Right on the button. Okay. We all can rise for the pledge, please. Okay. All right. If we could all rise for the pledge, please. Sal. Sal. Rise for the pledge. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. We have a moment of silence for the men and women in the armed forces, our first responders, those fighting the, our veterans, those fighting the good fight in the Ukraine, and those four individuals who lost their lives and nine injured in today's shooting in Louisville. Thank you. And we're gonna do the uh, Creed, Katie. Yep. Let me Body. grab let me grab my American's Creed by William Tyler Page. I believe in the United States of America as a government of the people, by the people, for the people, whose just powers are derived from the consent of the governed, a democracy and a republic, a sovereign nation of many sovereign states, a perfect union, one and inseparable, established upon those principles of freedom, equality. Justice, justice and humanity for which, which American, American patriots, patriots sacrifice their lives, their lives and fortunes. I therefore believe it is my duty to my country to love it, to support its constitution, to obey its laws, to respect its flag, and to defend it against all enemies. Thank you. Is somebody on the phone or is that not set up yet? Uh, we didn't have anybody calling. Oh, let me. Yeah, it's Doug. Sit down. Yes, uh, I'd like to suspend the rules to add item 10C-1, uh, which would be discussion and possible action, <coughs> excuse me, discussion and possible action on setting a date for the annual town budget meeting. 
uh, suggested date would be May 2nd. Do we have a second for Katie's motion? Second. So, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? I'm going to abstain. I thought it was on the agenda already. The That's the referendum. Oh, okay. We have to have a, uh, a town meeting for the budget prior to, and that date complies with the charter. And we didn't know that before? What's that? And we didn't catch that before the agenda went out? No. Okay. So can I get the vote again? Yeah. I'm going to abstain. Just you? Anybody else is in favor? I, yep. Okay. All right. Um, Okay. All right. Item number four, uh, we have our DECA award winners here and the advisor. Yes? No? Maybe because it's school vacation? Uh, that could be. That could okay. be. Okay. Could be. We might see them next time. Well, okay. All right. So moving on to item five, I'd like to move to accept items 5A, B, C1, and C2. Second. Any discussion on the consent agenda? I'd just like to mention on behalf of the New Milford Police Department that they are requesting permission here <coughs> to expect, accept a donation from Iron Law of uh, $1,633.02 designated for use with the cadet program to pay for 15 belt setups and a donation from Iron Law for $20. $2,345 to be designated for use in the cadet program to get new hats and spring jackets. So we have a motion and a second. Alex? Yeah, you do. Uh, question. Mm -hmm. um, how have the cadets had their items funded in the past? They've been donations. Always donations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they don't show up in a budget. It's 100% then donations? Yeah, it's so. been 100% donations. Just, we can bring the chief in and ask him at the next meeting. If Rotary's like. donated for cadets a couple times. Great. Okay, yeah. just wondering no, if no, that's I, their I whole budget. You know, okay. And then... Um, but, I'll con but Alex, I'll confirm that with the chief. Yeah. I, just you to know, make sure. It's a great program. I just don't know if they need money and they sure. can't get a donation. What then? Um, and then the other thing I need to bring up is um, I was disappointed that we didn't get our agendas until last Thursday, especially just before holiday weekend. I think it's a, a concern that people don't have things, including the minutes from the last meeting, uh, at least the week before, as they really should, especially because it was a holiday weekend, a lot of people weren't home. So to come out late on Thursday, just before the Monday meeting, I'm disappointed. And I would hope that we'd be able to do that a little more, more to the beginning of the week. So it's more closer to seven days. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else? I just Hillary? A, a spelling correction by name. I'll just I'll sit down here. Really you got Ram right here. Mm -hmm. oh. Ram was right. Just one out. Okay. Details. There you go. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other comments on the consent agenda? With the uh, Spelling change. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Aye. Thank, Thank you. you Doug? Oh, okay. Mr. Mayor, Kelly on the line. Thank Doug's you, Doug. Scout. Item five. Okay. Uh, we have an update uh, from the Eagle Scouts uh, mural presentation. Yep. You come on out. With advisor and uh, so, Jason O'Connor, director of the Milford Youth Agency. Maria um, Leo, youth advocate. I'm Sarah. Thank you for coming, Sarah. Sarah, what's your last name? Um, Sa. Can you spell it? S E O. Okay. <laughs> um, so, hi, my name is Sarah, and I'm a senior at New Milford High School. I'm also a Life Scout, Life Scout and I'm working on getting Eagle Rank before my 18th birthday. Um, part of that requirement is to lead a project that benefits the community. And so I created the mural event, which is basically we're gonna create an eight foot by eight foot board, we call it a barn quilt. And we're gonna paint a picture of a garden with a bunch of flowers and bees. And um, it's gonna be painted by children in the community. Um, last Friday and Saturday, we started working on it. So we built the structure, we started painting a little bit of the background. Um, and the painting will have the theme motto of it, which is Cultivate Kindness. 
Um, and the purpose of that is to like promote the idea of diversity, inclusivity, and personal growth. Um, and I think when the children come and like paint their own flowers, the creations, it just highlights how like everyone is different, but that just makes us community. Um, the reason I chose this project is because I like working with children. I actually want to pursue education in college. And also, I feel like New Milford was a really positive environment, and I want to give back to you guys um, with how you guys helped me. Um, and I also chose Youth Agency to partner with because I've worked with their programs before, and they really help a lot of the youth in New Milford. Um, personally, I volunteered at their Summer Thursday program, and I'm part of their Student Advisory Board. And I'm just really grateful for Youth Agency for helping me with this project. I'm really excited to see where this goes. Any questions for Sarah? Katie? Sarah, thank you. Yes. Excellent uh, presentation. What grade are you in? I'm a senior and at where, New High School. Do you know where you're going to go to college? Not yet, but probably somewhere in Connecticut. Well, they're going to be very lucky to have you, and we're very lucky to have you. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Thank you for working with the Youth Agency and being on the advisory board. Thank you. It's, it's wonderful work. Chris? Um, I just want to say a couple things. I, the number of Eagle Scouts that we get in this town uh, just it really heartens me that, that scouting is alive and well in New Milford anyways. And hearing you up here with your poise uh, and, and your, uh, uh, your project uh, tells me that you're going to be a, you're a great adult in the making. So. Um, we appreciate you doing this for the community. Thank you. Any other questions for Sarah? And Sarah, as we talked in the office, uh, what an excellent endeavor being an Eagle. Less than 1% of all the Scouts are that. So truly amazing. And I believe you're going to be our second young lady that's an actual going to be an Eagle Scout. So I think uh, that's truly amazing. It's a big honor, and we're so proud of you. And we're very proud of what your initiative here with the uh, quilt trail or the actual quilt, quilt uh, art board that will be at Pettibone. I think it's amazing. We're very excited about it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay, uh, item number six, uh, mayor's comments. Thank you, Katie. Uh, first, I want to congratulate Leo uh, Malky, who received, and we talked about him a few weeks ago, so he received state recognition. Well, now he, uh, he has a national gold medal for short story, oh, and he'll yeah. be here in a couple of weeks. Oh. Uh, and he has won a national medal from the Scholastic Art and Writing, and he's done this. This will be his fifth year in a row as a gold medalist. Mm. So truly amazing. He's talented, right? Absolutely. Congratulations, as we all know, to the UConn men's basketball team for their national title. Mm -hmm. And I believe uh, they've won in the 2000s the most of any mm -hmm. school. Uh, so quite a tribute, so congratulations. I uh, also want to uh, thank everyone uh, that participated uh, uh, within their faith for Easter. Those that observe Passover, that's until Thursday, uh, this Thursday. Uh, those in Ramadan, which ends Thursday the 20th. And those of the Orthodox faith, is Holy Week is this week, and then Easter is this coming Sunday. I want to thank the Park and Rec, Harrybrook, and Oddfellows for this year's Easter egg hunts. It's great to see all the kids out there enjoying uh, uh, all the festivities. Uh, and I know the parents were extremely happy. It was a very safe event and uh, lots of extra candy for the kids. Um, some of the events that we're going to be having uh, going on uh, uh, as we begin uh, our kind of our, our event season. Let me pull out my uh, sheet here is uh, we're going to start off with um, uh, April uh, 18th at Bank Street Theater is the free screening of the movie Like, and that's sponsored by the New, New Milford Youth Agency who was just here. Uh, on April 20th from noon to 7 p.m. at Railroad Street is the grand reopening and open house of Skin and Tonic. On April 21st from 7 to 9.30 at the Silo is the grad party fundraiser and wine tasting. On April 22nd at 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., Clatter Valley is doing their Earth Day celebration. April 22nd is the Women's Club's Penny Auction. That opens at 11 p.m. at the Pettibone Gym. April 29th, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. in downtown New Milford is the Spring Sip and Stroll. 
April 29th from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the Max is the Pride Prom. May 6th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Litchfield Crossing is the Touch a Truck and Child Safety Seat Installation. May 7th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the High School is the Grad Party Fundraiser Junk in the Trunk. On May 13th from 9 a.m. to noon, they start the Farmer's Market. It's the opening day, and there'll be live music on the bandstand. Also on the 13th at St. Francis School, uh, Church is Knights of Columbus Car Show. May 13th from 9 a.m. to noon on the green is the Plant Swap, and thank you to the Milford Garden Club. On May 14th from 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. right on the middle green uh, is free community yoga by Evolve. May 14th, locations throughout the town, we're going to be doing the walking tour of the Great Fire in New Milford of 1902. <clears throat> May 19th, 20 and 21st, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Young's Field is the third annual Goat Days, and they're bringing a carnival this year as well. Great thing for the kids. Mm. May 20th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Land Deming is Family Fun Day, so it'll be great events happening uh, both at Young's Field and at Land Deming, and they're also going to have the Kids Fishing Derby. May 21st is the first Rock on the Block. That's at 6.30 p.m. right on Bank Street. May 29th on the Green uh, is going to be at 10 a.m. is going to be the Memorial Day Parade. 8 a.m. is going to be the Gaylordsville Memorial Parade. So a great way that we as a town can honor those uh, military heroes that have fallen uh, and paid the ultimate sacrifice. And before I move on to something else, Alexandra is still here. And Alexandra, can you tell the council knows watching what's going on this Saturday at the silo. This silo is the uh, Diversity Month celebration. Um, it's our first event of the year as an accredited uh, non-governmental organization with the United Nations Economic and Social Council. We'll be doing five events of the year, throughout the year. And the uh, start of Saturday is the first one. And we're very excited about that. Thank you, Alexandra. Mayor. Yes, Katie. Unfortunately, on that list, something very important was left off from May the 6th. It's the Rotary Shredding event, which uh, many people have missed last year, right, Stephanie? Totally. And it will be a petty bone from uh, 10 till 1. Just drive up. We take the boxes out. It's $10 for, you know, the big paper box. But uh, You ready your papers in a very a, compliant fashion and safe way. Oh, it's a huge truck. Oh, every, yeah, it's it's very very smooth operation. We've been doing it for years, but don't forget May sixth. All 6th. those things you couldn't get rid of last year, Stephanie. You can bring. <laughs> They're still piling. Yeah. <laughs> Good. All right. Good. Uh, next, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, shortly uh, from the Municipal Roads Committee is uh, the road work that we're going to be doing, and uh, also we started Canada Lake Road North uh, today. It's sort of the drainage work. So that's the beginning of the process. Uh, Addis Park, for those that don't know where that is, that's our park on Grove Street. Uh, DPW is going to start the paving process of the parking lot there. So that will be closed uh, from tomorrow to Friday as uh, we prepare and then pave uh, that um, parking lot. Uh, the New Milford High School roof, uh, the contractor continues working uh, on the round roof sections and the, the panels continue to be installed. Uh, if you get a chance, please uh, drive by there. We talk about it uh, during uh, previous town council meetings. It looks absolutely beautiful uh, on there. And it's a 50 year lifespan roof. Uh, New Milford, we uh, have been striving to become a B city. We talked about this uh, last year and uh, want to thank the Girl Scout Troop 40297 and Nick Pooter's chairman of the B committee and the committee. We're going to be doing a free showing this Saturday of the pollinators that's going to be at bank street theater and that's at 10 a.m seating is limited so if you get a chance uh, please pre-register for your tickets you can go on the uh, mayor's facebook page and uh, register from there it'll take you to to that and want to thank uh, the girl scouts as they're also creating a brochure too that they'll be handing out different uh, civic funds that we have here to talk about the importance of being a bee city and uh, being respective of our pollinators a reminder that April is Donate for Life Month, and want to thank Andy and Donna Cozo as they gave us a new Donate for Life flag that we have raised here at Town Hall. And uh, if you're more interested in uh, what Donate for Life does, it's www.donate, D-O-N-A-T-E, life, L-I-F-E, all one word, dot net. want to thank uh, Bank Street Theater. Uh, we talked about this before. 
uh, is they're going to be doing the, sh the uh, free showing of the movie Like. We just talked about that. And that discusses the good and bad of social media and how to have a healthy relationship with our phones and our, dev and our devices. So uh, if you have uh, some youngsters in your house and you kind of want to know more about that, please uh, bring them down to this uh, great movie. And again, it's free. Uh, the Youth Agency also is doing the Upstanders Workshop. And uh, the Upstanders Workshop, what they're going to be doing is it's a free interactive program that talks about bullying, sexual harassment, abusive behaviors, including violence. The workshop will give students and parents the tools to help and navigate healthy ways through real life scenarios. I want to thank Jason and Stacy and our Youth Agency team for putting on the support workshop. Uh, please go to the uh, Facebook page or the town site and click on and register for this important workshop. Uh, this past week, uh, last two weekends ago, I think it was, the 97th Annual Children's American Revolution State Conference. Uh, there we uh, honored our Revo uh, the uh, American Revolution State President, Ryan Delmore, and uh, he did a project, Hungry Heroes, that provided donations, both food and monetary, movie tickets also for children in need to Camilla's Cupboard. I uh, also wanted to thank Representative Buckby, because he was there as well. And they also were able to donate $5,000 that they raised to Angie Chastain, uh, who runs Camilla's Cover. Also want to th uh, congratulate uh, the grand opening of And Company, which is on 36 C Bank Street, right down the street. They have candles, jewelry, vintage clothing, you need gifts and more. If you get a chance, stop in and see all the wonderful products that they have to offer. Uh, definite time for uh, wonderful gifts. And that's what I have, Katie. That's great. Uh, item number seven is a... I've got uh, one last. Oh, thank you. Something yeah, so one more to go as uh, I end my comments, but I want to yield it to Mike Boucher. We have talked about uh, for several weeks going on now, at least a year and a half, two years now, about Century Brass about what our thoughts are for that and moving the DPW facility, which is sorely in need. I asked Jack and I asked Mike to come and talk to the council a little bit about what that would look like, just so we can kind of get a, a little bit of a, of a heads up as we talk more and more about this process. So Jack and Mike, can you come up? I'll, just, I'll start with just a brief introduction of some information. And then Mike has a, a number of slides. I give him credit, he's been doing a lot of research on this and so uh, he'll follow up with, and go through um, what we have and we've visited several locations and so he's taken pictures of other locations to give you an idea of what we're looking at doing at Century Brass. Um, I think you've you know over the last couple of years we've started to remediate the site um, the steel is gone the dirt piles are gone we've submitted a clean closure plan to DEP which I believe will be approved very shortly uh, a couple steps after that, we will be doing what they, we call surgical remediation uh, along the pipes. There's some pipes there, and then eventually have to move across the road and do some remediation at the or investigation at the outfall. Uh, but that is that's that's a, a plan that's been before EPA and DEP, and we are meeting our obligations and moving along with that. As far as the site itself, um, we're we're planning to use the site for a public works facility. Mike's got a, a layout for you. Just a little background on Public Works. We currently have 52 staff members, nine administrative, um, 20, 27 and a half highway crew members. The half one's tricky. Uh, we get a person half year and they get a half year with a park and rec, so we don't cut a person in half. Um, we have five people who are fleet maintenance, 11 facilities maintenance staff, and we currently have one intern. Um, and we house those all at the Public Works facility in different locations. And Mike's going to show you some pictures. Equipment, we have 63 pieces of, of equipment, including 25 dump trucks, six small trucks, two loaders, two graders, two backhoes, five pickup trucks, one van, two excavators, three different types of rollers, uh, one tree truck, which is new, and we, I know you've, you've seen it out, a pothole machine, a catch basin cleaner, three sweepers, two chippers, stump grinder, and various facilities department main, maintenance vehicles. We currently, between three locations, as far as undercover, we cover 35,664 square feet. That is heated, well, not heated, uh, different areas that we store equipment. It is not sufficient to store all of our equipment. I think you 
go by, you'll see that. What, we, what we've done is we, uh, Mike and myself, have gone to various locations, including the Harwinton Public Works facility, the Waterford, Connecticut Public Works facility, the Chile, New York facility, and Irondequoit, New York, right? I got that right. Um, facility. They're, they're very in size, but they're either a little bit smaller or a little bit larger than we are, but they, they, they mirror what we want we wanted to do. Um, the new facility will be designed to be carbon neutral. It's one of the things I've talked to DEP, I've talked to various agencies about, and looking at grants that will help us achieve that goal of being carbon neutral. I think it's important that we move in that direction. Um, it will also be an APWA accredited facility. Um, and we will be able to generate electricity, hopefully enough, we were planning on generating enough electricity with solar panels and other devices to be able to run our, our location without taking much power off the grid. It will include offices, a, um, a cafeteria, proper locker rooms and shower facilities, I'm saying proper, yeah. um, IT server room. Um, right now we're working on a server room at the police station, so we're looking at being able to improve our, our, our IT servers room. I've been working with David Watson on getting that information. A conference and meeting rooms. Emergency operations center. Currently we don't have one for the town. This would be an emergency operations center. So in a storm, it would be fully powered, have generator capacity, um, and Jim Furlow and, and the emergency operations center be at the location. Indoor truck and equipment storage. Everything will be indoors. Um, fully equipped maintenance area. We're even talking about uh, fleet maintenance equipment. We will be able to expand the amount of work that they do. We're looking at being able to do police vehicles and other vehicles for the town, similar to what other towns do, so that we could be, instead of outsourcing that, we'll be able to do it at our location. A truck wash bay, um, covered winter and salt sand, so that everything will be under cover. That will meet with our MS4 requirements. Um, pipe and material storage yards, um, covered gasoline and diesel fuel. We will be able to have our own gasoline and diesel fuel. I know. That's something the mayor and we've talked about. We're concerned about being able to get fuel in case of emergency. Um, it'll be covered also. Because that's an aquifer protection area, um, I've worked with Jim Furlow. We've already got that permit in place, but it needs to be covered, so it will be a covered facility. Um, the facility's maintenance operations will be combined, will, as far as a building, will be combined into where public works are. We'll all be one under one roof. Uh, recycling center, we've already applied for a grant for about $4 million to relocate the, the um, current recycling center. And uh, it's, it, we've a plan for the space that has plus another 50% um, and that it, most of it will be covered. Again, we're working on MS4 requirements. Uh, a helicopter landing plat pad and a storage building is something that we're looking at. A fire tower um, for, for the fire departments. And also, and I, uh, one of the things that the police has ta have talked to us about, um, I'm not sure, we'll, we'll talk about later, and I know that the, the region's looking at this, but an indoor shooting range. Uh, outdoor shooting ranges are getting very difficult to operate. So this would be an, op we're, we're putting space, but that would be something we could look at in the future. Um, we're gonna move to a sustainable public works operation, including solar panels on the ground. One of the things we're looking at is using the pad for solar panels or some type of energy uh, or income generating uh, capacity. Looking at different types of vehicles, natural gas or electrical vehicles, you know, as we go forward. Um, we'll be continuing to improve our, or expand our preventive maintenance program to improve vehicle maintenance life. Uh, we're looking at road maintenance chemical products. Mike's looking at different things that are more environmentally, you know, safe, I guess is the best term. Um, at other towns, I've unfortunately had to get involved with, we've remediated people's wells because of salt infiltration. You know, so as we move forward, we want to look at alternatives to that. Um, environmental and cultural, we've had, we've, we've had talks about wildflowers, the bees. If we do put solar panels, there are, there are actually um, pollinator garden plants that are designed to go under solar panels. So we're looking at something like that. Walking, a walking trail around it, possibly. Um, I've actually had someone say, why don't, when you do that, uh, put in the history of Century Brass, like have a plaque there to explain this, this, the site's history um, and give information about solar and hydropower. Um, we'll also have a, the capacity of 100% generator capacity so the facility will be able to run in case of emergencies. I, know, I think you may be aware that there's discussion about rolling blackouts going forward because of our grid capacity. Um, we've, I've had a couple different people approach and we've looked at different ways of putting solar power 
uh, either on the pad, on the pad or, and the buildings, and we feel we have the potential to generate up to over three megawatt of production at, the, at that location. Um, talked about possibly a cogeneration co or fuel cells, geothermal, uh, battery storage, um, possibly. I've talked to you about the uh, environmental compliance funding. You know, we're looking at different grants. I mean, the mayor and, and Tammy have been very generous. They're sending. A, we're, we're going through a lot of information right now. There are grants out there. We're looking to see if there are grants that are applicable. We've already applied for the one for the uh, the uh, recycling center. We are looking for other grants for for brownfields, um, and also um, there are grants out there for municipalities that have, for their infrastructure, which. Uh, a public works facility fits within the definition of infra infrastructure. I think you know, I, I do put it in here, is that moving the public works facility is part of the riverfront revitalization development process that you have in the town. I know the riverfront committee is, is, is working diligently on looking at plans, and where public works is, it's, it's in the middle of that area that you know, we need to move out of there so that you can access the river and, and, you, and best utilize that resource. Um, we are fortunate we have public water already there. We have public sewer already there, natural gas, and rail. So most of what we need is already at the site. Um, regulatory, I've talked to DEP and EPA, part of our remediation of the site. They are very enthusiastic, said they would be, a very, they would be cooperative and help us with any permits that we need going forward for the location. Uh, part of that would be MS4 compliant, our stormwater. We have to be compliant with all stormwater regulations. Um, we're working closely with plant. You know, we've talked to Laura about you know, planning and zoning, what we need to do to make sure we meet those re our regulations. Uh, Jim Furlow has already talked about wetlands and the aquifer protection. We've, we've actually got our aquifer protection permit in place. If we do go to putting solar panels, we'll need to work with the Connecticut Siding Council and, and Pura. Um, there are some limits to virtual net metering, but I believe with the way that the, the regulations are changing, that we should be able to access virtual net metering for all locations. Uh, I have talked to EPA and DEP also about the, the site. So uh, funding, we're looking at grants, private investment, income, and you know, solar income. So with that, Mike's got some slides to give you. Thank you, Jack. <coughs> so as you, oh, I'm sorry. Can I just ask Jack yep. one question? Go ahead, Jack. One thing you said that I, I think I just wanted to ask, you mentioned that you were um, for the police department, you know, the fire tower, but you were talking about indoor shooting range. That's for the police department. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, public works, we're not getting to shoot at anything. Well, just check. <laughs> just check. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jack. So, Pete, you probably remember, we've been talking about doing this for 20 plus years. Uh, we've way outgrown that facility. 20 years ago, we had outgrown that facility. Yep. So what I did was I put together kind of a comparison as to what we liked from what we saw and what we have now. So uh, this is the Waterford, Connecticut facility. Um, they're off the main road, so that's a main road that runs through Waterford, uh, lower right-hand corner. The building and the whole facility that's that's their whole facility you see right there in one giant location um you know they, they aren't as big as we are they don't have the they don't have the miles of road they don't have the people but they have a they have a very nice facility there so their parking is right there by the building they don't have to cross the main road uh they're not putting anybody in danger coming to work in the mornings as we often do um their ex entrance and exit doors are large enough for trucks and vehicles to come in and out uh, i'll show you later on how our trucks fit into our bays now um, the fuel pumps are located right in their facility, not on a road where there's cars passing by all the time, where ours is now. Um, their wash bay, so this thing has a pointer, it's right there in the corner of the building. So they drive into wash bay, there's an underbody wash that comes on, they wash the truck and they drive into the building and put it away. Where we are now, we have to come out of the building, we have to drive down the road, so you know, you're, you're, you're not really doing a thorough job of cleaning your equipment. Um, you know, their, their front entrance is clean, welcoming front entrance. Um, you know, you're safe, you're safe walking in, basically. So now this is our facility, you've all seen it. Um, you know, we're right on the main road. So like I say, the guys have to cross the street to get to work every day. And trust me, in the morning when it's dark, it's tough. Um, we've got recreational facilities, <clears throat> excuse me, across the street and next to our facility. So there's always stuff going on and it's just a little bit unsightly there. So our old facility, it's old, outdated, it's small. Uh, as you can see, there's stuff outside everywhere. We just don't have the room to put stuff inside anymore. We have more trucks than we have built than we have bays. So I labeled so, the buildings. So Our right. first building, building one, is the one all the way to the right. It was built in 1940. Uh, the newest building is the front building, building five, that was built in 1975. So Mike, so, for those that are watching, 
live and also council members. Mm -hmm. So the vehicles that are to the right, that are behind the building, and those that are in the middle of, of your uh, uh, campus, mm -hmm. can you tell the council and those watching what those are? Well, the, the four green pieces you see there, those are our mowers. Uh, those are our four tractors. Uh, you've got a couple of cars, a van there below or above them, but that whole row is trucks. Um, so the mowers, what do they cost? Uh, we just bought one, I'm, I want to say around 250 somewhere in that range. Okay. Um, and then so there's quite a bit of money sitting right okay. there. And how about the trucks? The trucks there, the ones we just bought were at 230 a piece, 240 a piece. And because we don't have the room, where do they go? They sit outside. <laughs> the problem we have with this is they're sitting on gravel, they're sitting on dirt. So we wash them, we try and get the salt off them in the winter. But then the, it rains and everything bounces back up on them. So these trucks end up, we end up with a lot of rusting issues. Uh, wiring becomes an issue in some of this equipment from sitting outside. And, and Mike, in the middle, what are those vehicles in the middle? Uh, those are just, uh, we have a couple of the smaller vehicles. Um, to the left by the Braden building there, you'll see that's our, our second loader. There's a backhoe there. Uh, again, we have no place to put them inside, so they have to sit outside. What? And the, I'm sorry, Katie, and just real quick, the trucks now, we just, we just ordered one, right? Mm -hmm. Two? Two. And how much are they now? We spent 500000 so 250 each. Okay, and how many trucks are parked outside right over there? Well, I count one, two, three, four, five, six big ones and two small ones. Um, some, this Plus, was during the day, so there may be, there's a couple more that park out there that aren't right. that are Plus in your the yard. tractor, so you're at least a couple million in. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. In, in equipment that sits outside. That grader in the front in the foreground is, is getting replaced. The new one's already been ordered at three hundred and fifty thousand. So the new one and it's it's that's it that thing right there is old. The new one is all high tech, it's all electronic, it it, it, it really shouldn't sit outside all the time. Okay. So uh, Mike, the yellow are they storage containers? Yes. Yep. We have obviously I tell I keep saying it, we don't have enough room. So we have I believe we have four. Uh, there's one on that side of the Braden building, three on this side. Uh, storage containers. Plus, we have four at the Century Brass facility. Now, Mike, the plow trucks that you do park in the building, mm -hmm. my understanding is they won't fit with, with the plow attached and the sander attached. Unless you have a real good driver, no. Um, you, some of the guys are real good about you know getting, doing a little ballet to get them in. You got to swing and, but they they're yeah. Um, the only building is. There's two bays in building two and building three are the only bays that the guys can have their plows easily. Uh, there's a few in building four that the guys can get in with their plows. Otherwise, everybody has to do it when they leave for the snowstorm. Mm -hmm. um, this is just the other side of the facility. You see the parking you know, across the street there. There's not enough parking for everybody, so some have to park here. Uh, we have three spots for residents, so if we get something where a lot of residents have to come, mm -hmm. there's just not enough parking for everybody. Uh, this is, you know, our, our front entrance is small. I mean, good luck finding it. If you don't know where it is, good luck finding it <laughs> in that true. mess. That's so um, our so our facility is spread out. So this is just a, a, an overview. Uh, obviously, the current facility is right here. Um, our yard is here. Our materials yard, that's our main materials yard. Our salt sheds are here. Uh, you have recycling center, you have a wash bay, and you have facilities here. And then way up here is the Century Brass facility where we have another smaller yard in the back there right now. And the fuel pump. And the fuel pump. The yeah, I'm sorry. Yep, the diesel pump is right there. So that's Patriot's Way. Uh, that's basically a road at this point. Uh, there's a lot of traffic on that road. So the guys are fueling right next to the road. Uh, we had actually had bollards protecting them when we first put that in, but we thought it was safer to take them out so some people don't run into them. Uh, we also have a second storage building at 533 Danbury Road as you're coming up Route 7, uh, but it's almost you know four and a half miles away from our main facility. So we have uh, that's where we store stuff for the winter. The PD also uses it, and Park and Rec uses it. Um, it'd be nice to get that all moved closer to us. Uh, this is an, our idea for now. This is the Waterford facility still. Uh, when you walk in the front door, you know it's open, it's airy, it's bright. The ladies in the office can see the front door. Um, in our current facility, it's small, it's cramped, it's dark, and Naya cannot see the front door from her desk. So she just hears it open, or somebody bangs on the window and says, I'm here. So, you know, it, it, 
it be, could become a safety issue or it's just it's you know their offices are large bright this is the kind of thing we're looking for uh, it, it's a better look for for us um, there's plenty of office space in this building um, our offices are small the top picture is our downstairs that's Naya's desk and Lorene that's their office and then upstairs you have uh, you see Jack in the back corner there but then you have one two three other offices there and then another office to the right and they're all crammed into a small area um, there's just no you know there's no room there I mean there's stuff everywhere in these buildings we don't have room to store so this is a f the foreman's office in Waterford uh, he's not the neatest guy but he's got a big office plenty of room this is where Chuck and I do our business um, you know we're crammed into one side and then we have our snow desk here in the front and then another desk for an intern if needed uh, you notice the pile of boxes pile of boxes up in the corner here that's just we have no room to store anything in this office Mike, is any part of your current situation ADA oh no accessible I, no. I was just thinking about that. I was gonna say that thank you uh, neither the front office nor our office it's upstairs and there's no no elevator so no we are not ADA compliant oh. um, the break room in Waterford now their their crew is half the size of ours and they have a break room big enough that could handle ours um, mm. you know our break room is there's maybe 15 seats and then a bay in the garage is where the guys get their breaks um, we just don't have the room they have a conference room it's pretty good size they got a decent sized table we have a small room and again you'll see you know in the corner here there's just stuff stacked everywhere because we have no room for storage this is our storage area in our office up there it's a little cubby that you need a ladder to get up into so we have all our safety equipment uh, some sign material tools uh, hand tools you know our safety vests our gloves all that stuff is up just shoved up into this little cubby uh, their training room they have a, a room specifically for training with tables you know with tables chairs uh, a, a monitor on the wall everything you know our training room again is just our break room there's really no place for us to do any kind of formal training so we always have to go either to petty bone or maybe the ambulance barn someplace to do any formal training um, this is my favorite here their bathroom now they've got you know big open airy bathroom this is just the men's room uh, they've got showers the, the, everything's neat clean this is our current bathroom so you got two stalls oh. and two urinals for 33 guys 30 32 guys excuse me we have we have a female down there now okay. so we have 32 guys that use that and she has to go to the front office and use the woman's room there because we just don't have the facility for it um, if you look real close you'll see our shower in the back there in the back of a, a utility closet uh, thanks to Jack's wife for the nice shower curtain otherwise we wouldn't even have that so I don't think it's been used and when you come out you wash the floors isn't that a yeah, you know, yeah. Floor you, you, can, you can keep busy while you're showering yeah. <laughs> uh, their garage bays now this is one big room now granted they're not as big as we are but you know everything is it's it's tall there's there's plenty of headroom you know you can lift a dump body up inside uh, the floors are clean and neat um, these floors aren't heated but it's our goal to heat the floors um, that'll help with drying equipment when we come in from storms melt you know melting stuff mm -hmm. um, it's easier to keep clean that way we'll have a, a a drain down the center so we and hoses so we can hose everything off inside um, and it'll all go into a sanitary facility tank whatever and then it'll be taken care of the correct way for ms4 um, you know they're all there all their drivers are they all have their own little uh, areas with a toolbox and a locker you know, that that's our goal for our guys also um, you know these are our truck bays we have four buildings so everything is small everything is cramped uh, we can't hose our floors off because of we're so close to the river so everything has to be dried and swept so you know you're you're you're, you're never going to see clean on these ever until we can power wash them and that we can't do so um, you know the the door speaking about you, you asked me about that now this is just one of our newer trucks trying to get in the building that's his bay he fits but it's it's really tight um, and he's actually able to get in there with his plow on but it's one of those where you got to go to one side swing the plow in go to the other side it, it, it's it's fun to watch but that's why we have those <laughs> those yellow uh, metal plates on the outside of the building to protect it uh, their their garage now their vehicle maintenance garage the upper left hand picture is all their fluids all neatly hung yeah. with with hoses and you know meters it meters the fluids as they come out uh, the lower picture left hand side is a hundred hundred thousand pound jack that's built into the floor 
So if one of our trucks should break down in the middle of a snowstorm and need to be worked on, they have to empty the sander, they have to take the plow off and get it inside because we don't have anything strong enough to pick up a fully loaded vehicle. Uh, with something like that, we could bring the truck in fully loaded with the plow on, put it up, fix it, and get it right back out again. Um, they have a crane overhead right here. We have one in our, in our welding bay, but it's no, nowhere near as, as uh, big and sturdy as that one. The guys now either have to have the loader come in with the boom on it, or they have a small truck that they back in with a crane on the back. How do you put the sander on the trucks now? With the loader. Oh. With so the loader. Outside. We have a special, a special sling. Outside? Yes, it's all done outside. Um, the lower right-hand picture is their, is their parts room. Their parts room is neat, clean, you know, easy access to everything. So this is our current garage. Um, we have, uh, if you can see it, like in the middle of the orange thing there, there's two hose reels. One is oil, one is hydraulic fluid. Uh, everything else is stored in barrels. So we have different pieces of equipment, different brands. They all take different fluids. You know, not, hydraulic fluid is different over different types of equipment. So everything is stored in 55 gallon drums on the floor. Not the best way, not the safest way. We are OSHA compliant, but at this point, there's, there's much better ways to do it. Um, if you look above that, that right there, that's our parts storage. So it's a little deck up above everything. Um, it's just not enough room to store the parts we need. Uh, the grader is, I wanted this one because they're working on the grader. So now you can't get by that grader without crawling under it. There's just not enough room in there. The, the bays aren't big enough. Um, hey, Mike, can you go back? Oh yeah, that's a car hoist for working on work for working on cars. <clears throat> Excuse me, the red towers you see, there's four of them. Those are for working on trucks. But again, you have to have the truck empty. You have to have the sander out of them, all that stuff to be able to lift them. Um, that's more than we had a couple of years ago. So the, the guys were rolling around on the ground prior to that. Um, you know, again, you got. Uh, our tools, we, we, we purchased brand new toolboxes and tools for these guys, um, but we just don't have the, the, you know, they have plenty of tools now, but they don't have the room to do the work here. These are their workbenches. There's just stuff everywhere. Uh, more storage here. You know, this is their little break room where they want to sit down and take a break at break time. Uh, that's their the main the office. There's one desk in there. Um, this is our facilities maintenance department. Now, there was no facilities maintenance in Waterford or any of the buildings we looked at, but they're going to be coming over with us. So they're right now approximately 3,000 square feet. Uh, they're in a similar situation. You know, their break room is right in their work area. You know, they, they just don't have their stuff is just packed in there. They don't have room. Um, our goal is to bring them over. You know, the office is Joey and, and Dave. They're packed in this little office there. Um, this is the recycle center that's part of their facility. Now it's, it's set up as all recycle centers should be where the dumpsters are down and you're throwing the garbage bags or whatever the debris down into a, a dumpster instead of like at the recycle center now you have the two ladies that are like five foot one and they're trying to take these big 60 pound bags and throw them up and in. You know, you're just waiting for somebody to get hurt that way. Um, our new facility would have a very similar setup where we would have the raised platforms to, so that the stuff can go into the dumpsters. Plus, you don't have the, the trucks in there with the residents right. trying to pick those dumpsters up. Um, this is the current facility. I mean, most of you have probably been in there. Um, this is their, their generator now. Their generator is right there. It runs the whole facility, every building. The power goes out, the generator kicks on. It's like there was never a power outage. Uh, with us, this, is, this generator here runs building one, which is where our offices are, so we can continue to move on. Um, during a couple of these storms, that was our EOC. And you all saw how small my office was, so we had PD, fire, you know, everybody crammed into that little tiny space. It, it was interesting. Um, so this is our rough sketch of what we're looking for, our site plan for the facility. Um, you've got right here in the front, this front building, the, the lower level, so it'll be a two-story section. The lower level would be facilities. They would have garage space, uh, workspace, and office space. The upper part would be offices, um, you know, the break rooms, the, the locker rooms, whatever would be in that part of it. The big blue building here would be our indoor for trucks and materials, I mean trucks and uh, equipment. This green one would be our mechanics bay. And then we have cold, what we call cold storage, so larger equipment and some of the smaller trucks would go there. 
Um, this building here would be for the pothole truck. We could have everything in one spot and undercover like it's supposed to be. Uh, this is here would be our dump facility for our Vactor trucks. Currently, we cannot use our Vactor truck because we have no place to dump it legally. So we use it to jet pipes, but we can't use it to Vactor anything out. So we've, we've contracted a company. We're going to have to pay somebody else to do it for now. Um, these would be the fuel pumps right here. This will be the recycle center. This, these will be our storage containers, our salt sheds, and our, our yard, our materials yard. And then this right here would be the, uh, the fire department's, their training facility. They'd have their own little parking area, everything there. So, I mean, that's basically it. Um, solar panels. Oh, yep, I'm sorry. The solar panels would be in this, in this whole area here where the old, the old foundation is, the, the footprint of the old foundation, um, and probably on top of our buildings also. That's basically it. It's just a rough, let's get started and move this thing idea, so. Looks good. Does anybody have any questions? Mary Jane? It's about time. Oh, I agree. I, 23 years and we're I just I know. We've been talking about this for place. a really long time. Absolutely. So you guys deserve a better, you. safer facility. Thank you. Um, We've actually brought in Porta Johns for the winter because there's not enough ugh. bathroom place. And the guys don't like, obviously, you know, when it's zero degrees out, going out to use a port john but. Part of that was because of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, we wanted to have enough separation, so we actually assigned people mm -hmm. who brought port johns in during that time to separate people and make sure that, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. Yeah. So it looks like you're going to be taking up, what, 20 acres? Is that correct? Um, Is that what I saw in there? Hang on. Nine and four Nine and, and seven. seven. Yeah, the, the solar panels is seven of it, so it's probably about 13 total acres for us. And how many acres is the property? I can't remember. It's about 66 that's kind of flat, and then you have another 15 that's at high elevation. Yeah. 66? By the grid there. Wow, it is a big piece of property. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you. And Mary Jane, some of the things we're looking at outside of the facilities, obviously, uh, this is going to be a costly project, and I had uh, asked Jack, what could we put down there that could be environmentally friendly but also draw revenue? So that's why they're talking a little bit about in that area there, the, the uh, putting in solar. But then outside of there, there may be the availability to do energy storage there that could help pay and defer for a bond for a project like this. Mm -hmm. So we're all in the midst of working that as well as looking at grant funding for this project as well. Anyway, Chris? A um, few questions. Uh, one is, and this has uh, been something I've discussed with a few of you um, over the years now. Uh, across the town, across the departments, uh, we've got a, a, a file, a record storage issue. Uh, the lower portion of the PD is just jammed. So th there are people in, in the police department are jammed elbow to elbow like you guys are. But almost, they've got a huge amount of filing cabinets in the bottom. Um, uh, zoning, storage, our schools, storage. Um, town hall. I, I, the town hall. Um, so I'd like to consider, at least consider as part of this, some sort of central record storage, uh, environmentally control. I, I mean, I know we can um, have secure, we can separate according, you know, everybody has, legal uh, issues with storage, especially the school and the PD. But it just makes sense that we can free up so much space in our current buildings and combine it, especially storage uh, records that really don't get utilized very often. So uh, I would hope we could at least look at that option. I agree. I agree. So many things we have to keep. Yep. That, right. You know, they're everywhere. Right. Um, if you look at your current, uh, you know, employee safety uh, issues, um, safety events, or, or that sort of thing, if you look at slips, trips, and falls, uh, maybe lifting issues, will these facilities? Do you see that kind of improving that at all? We've already started to improve that just by making awareness. Okay. In the last year or two. Um, with Mike and Chuck paying a real good attention. We've had, we've reduced our, our rate tremendously. We actually got through six months of no, no injuries at all. And okay. of course then one day we had two. Um, right, right, okay. But, but we got to six months, it just, it's something I brought from industry. 
what we do is at six months we had a, we had a cookout to celebrate that we got through six months of no injuries, mm -hmm. and so we work very closely. We we meet monthly on, on a safety uh, safety meeting within our department. Uh, Chuck and Mike give uh, tailgate talks regularly. They do audits of their buildings. Uh, we do near miss. Um, you know, when I was in Ingersoll Rand, one of the things we did was more important than injury. Um, investigation was a near miss investigation. Yep. Yep. When you do near miss, you avoid having an injury later on. Right. So we've incorporated that. If you go into Mike's, um, Mike and Chuck's area at the bottom of the stairs, the board every day we mark down uh, the number of days they've gone without an injury. Every Friday, the mayor gets told uh, how many days we go without an injury. If there was an, a near miss or an injury or anything, the mayor has got a report on Friday that tells them what we're doing to make sure that it's not just well this is what happened. Then there's a then there's a, uh, a remedy for it. So yep. we don't let it, let it happen, we don't let somebody get hurt. So the answer, that was a long way of saying yes. And, okay. and, and I would say probably 90 to 95% of any accidents we do have happen in the field, not at the facility. Oh, okay, so interesting. Okay. Being, I, I can't remember the last time anybody got hurt at the facility. Okay. Yeah. In fact, the last one we had, which we mentioned, it was, wasn't even at our, it was, he went someplace to get some parts because they right. delivered to us. And at the place where he went, he fell off, he, he, he tripped and fell. Yeah. So it wasn't even at our location. He went right, to right. pick up some parts. Okay. So. Um, the other thing is, do you anticipate, and can you, and I'm not asking you to throw any guarantees or we'll hold you to it, but rough estimates of efficiency improvements by going to a new facility? Is that something you can comment on? My, my, my first thought when, when I think of that is, our first snowstorm every year, uh, we spend time getting all the equipment ready. But the first snowstorm is the true test. We'll get three, four, five breakdowns because things, you know, we just don't see everything. If we have everything stored inside, everything's kept clean out of the weather, out of the, like I said, that you got the salt bouncing up on everything, that's got to help. It's got to help. Uh, that's got to help that, that, uh, that situation because a lot of our issues now are corrosion, you know, rust, stuff then, like Mike, that. Mike, so. as a process, can you explain to the council? So, for instance, if somebody needs to get reloaded for materials, where do they go? How does that work? Depends on the material. They either go to our yard. In the wintertime, everybody goes from the salt shed right there up from our yard. But um, the yard there, we keep processed, the road gravel, stuff like that that we use on the, on the gravel roads. That's all kept at our yard uh, at Six Youngs Field there. Um, the other yard at Century Brass, we have... <coughs> A different process there we have screen fill there the contractors use that facility more um, we use that our screening plant is down there so it well, all depends on what so you for got. instance for the salt and sand so you have one that's undercover oh, but you have yeah. another one that if you could explain the process yeah, to the our, council our treated salt public. is in the salt shed that's currently standing at six young's field um, we also have a salt sand pile which we have to cover with a tarp and we also have a rock salt pile which is covered with a tarp so um, Mike, how that's you, been the biggest source of our injuries is uncovering those piles when, in the right. bad weather. So what, how's, yeah, how's that process so that they can more understand the process of Taking getting and steps. accessing well, that? How does that work? Every storm we use salt sand on the gravel road. So there's two trucks that are dedicated to that. So we need to get that pile uncovered for every storm. Um, how many guys does it take to uncover it? We usually send the whole crew up. It, it's, it's, it's everybody. It's the safest way to do it at this point. Um, the, the rock salt pile, like depending on the temperature of the storm, we're either going to use rock salt or we're going to use treated salt. So if we need to get to the rock salt, we have to move that tarp. And that's a pretty heavy duty tarp. That's a bigger pile. Yeah. So again, it, it's the whole crew. But you got guys climbing and, and pulling. You know, it, it, it's, it's, and Mike, that's been the biggest source. How would of you say here. average the whole crew? How long does it take for them to do the tarp? Well, by the time you get everybody organized and moving and, and get it done, I would say at least at least a half hour, 40 minutes. Okay. And how many guys? Yeah. It's 30 guys. Okay. Right so there. 30 times half hour. Yeah. Right? That's ridiculous. And this, you, they could be uncovering the tarp at 11 o'clock at night, right? Two in the morning, whatever we call it. So now, you, now that could be overtime hours. Sure. Right? So now the cost has exponentially gone up double. Mm -hmm. So really consider not half an hour, consider it an hour. Yeah. So now we've now 30, 30, approximately 30 hours of man hours for something with this new building you wouldn't have to do. No. I'd like to address some of Chris's questions though. If you look at the wash bay, the wash bay now is not in separate facilities right there. You pull in, you wash the truck, you put it away. 
we also mentioned that you're going to have toolbox. One of the things, like when I was in Ingersoll, Rand, you worked at a, at a press, you had a toolbox right there at your location so that you weren't walking back and forth. We found that we cut the, mm -hmm. the, the press setup time in half by just putting a toolbox at the site. Just having a grease gun, that's yeah. one of the most important We're going to have it so every, uh, the guys are right there, you know, they're at the truck, it promotes them doing the grease because they're not going mm -hmm. looking for the stuff that's right there. Uh, the mechanics bit, you saw where everything's on a hose, comes down, you <coughs> put it in. Well, think about it in a storm. Right now, we try to get it into these little mm -hmm. mechanics bay we have now. You're going to have a mechanics bay with a proper lift. They're not crawling under a truck in the middle of a storm with the ice and everything coming down on them. So there's another, if you start adding up the hours for right. doing this, um, you can see what we're getting to um, so that it's going to be, it's a much safer, more efficient way of, of, of being able to operate. It's going to extend the life of your, of your vehicles, You'll make them the operate better. warm and dry. Yeah. So that's basically, that's It'll They're not going to break down as frequently. Right. It'll be good for morale for the people that work yes. here, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Let's not put that aside. Don't yeah. ever let them see the pictures of the other place. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and I, would, I would suggest as this project gets closer that we somehow monetize some of those efficiencies yeah. to show our community yeah. you know, that we're, we're really spending this money wisely, and it's, it's, it's a wise investment. And I, I guess the last question I had is, the building construction, are they metal buildings? Yeah. Yeah. That, the building that you saw was an ONG Borghese building. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Perfect. Um, so right now the property is shared with the ambulance. Yeah. And the driveway is shared with the yeah. ambulance. And that's the only driveway. Will that be the only driveway? Yeah, because it, it's a road. It's actually a road. Scoville, that's Scoville mm -hmm. Street. And actually, with this day, it'll be maintained. It'll be maintained better, and that's one of the reasons. If you look on the layout, um, you see the ambulance down in the bottom right hand. You'll yeah. see where the helicopter pad is right next to them. Yeah. I'm just a little concerned about traffic. Yeah, I don't. I don't <laughs> foresee it being because while we're there, there's trucks going in and out. The ambulance doesn't have people come. You know, it, it's. I don't think you're going to see a big a big difference uh, as far as going in and out. If there's any place I would worry a little bit about a Congestion. It's not going to be there. It's going to be around the corners. You go over a railroad track and you try to go on the who's the time to get and For sure. Yeah, that's where I would I would be more concerned at that intersection than I would be on Scoville Street. So is a a, a traffic study part of the plan, or we not? Can, we it, we really hadn't done one at this point. We can do one as we as we go forward to plan. Again, I don't I don't foresee a big issue with with our trucks and things there. More as if when you get out of the Scoville Street, but that you know, if when we get, we start looking at it with, with zoning, if they require one, we'll, we'll do one. Oh. I heard you mention uh, this is a, a over the aquifer designated. There's an aquifer protection. Yeah, half of the half of that is on the aquifer uh, protection area. Yeah. And so, why was this location chosen, or was that? I mean, is there anything? Yeah, this was that this you was were chosen thinking? before. Uh, I think Mayor Murphy and mm -hmm. those guys did did this, okay. and that's kind of it's always kind of municipal use. They put it in to get that funding. It, it, for it was made a government loan. service district. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. so it's kind of always been there. If I can add, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Speak to the aquifer. Yeah, and and, like we you know, we started to talk about the gasoline. Yeah. Anything like that. First of all, those are above ground tanks or double wall tanks. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's there's a there's a spill plan. They already wrote the spill plan. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the, the, the tanks themselves, they'll be undercover. I talked to Jim Furl about that, so that the rain won't be when you're when you're there pumping gas or anything. Uh, there, the, as far as the containment goes, um, there'll be a there'll be a concrete pad, there'll be an impervious pad there. Um, so this protects that area. Um, we're required to meet the aquifer protection regulations, and so we've written a plan, a management plan, uh, for protecting that area to make sure that there is no impact on on the aquifer. Mm -hmm. And the, it's only half of the, it's, it's a, the line's in the middle of the, of the, of the property. Mm -hmm. So like the salt storage and, and those materials will be stored on the other side of the aquifer. It's off, off of the protection area. The aquifer protection area goes right about where that, you see where the road is that goes north, uh, north south? It's right about there is where the, the line of demarcation is. Mm -hmm. Mary Jane? Um, hopefully this will go through. When you leave the current premises, do you expect there to be any environmental concerns that you're leaving behind or what? Yeah, I, you know, doing environmental work for 30 years, I'll give you an answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. It's serious or like, I mean, I'm, I'm I don't know if it's serious. Um, when I, because most of the time the materials that you have there are probably light uh, and they're, or they're organic volatile materials, gasoline, diesel, things like that. 
funny as it sounds, it's not the things that we're really worried about. I'd be more worried if you had an industry there with uh, the chlorinated solvents uh, and materials like that. They, they migrate very rapidly, and, they get into the, and they're also sinkers. The materials that we use are floaters. They sit on top so you can vaporize them or, or remove them. If they're sinkers, like trichloroethylene, perchloroethylene, things like that, they sink. They, they, they have a uh, density of about 12 pounds per gallon, and they go down, and they get underneath the aquifer. So I'm not as concerned. And I don't see any materials coming out into the river now. I don't see a lot of evidence where it's, a, it's pervasive. I would say in the area of the courtyard, you'll probably find contaminated soils. Um, but I don't, I don't see it as being an overly extensive remediation. Okay. And that, that central lot was gravel for a long time, so I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that was spilled yeah. in there over the years. Yeah. Katie? Jack and uh, Mike, there are no underground tanks any longer over where you are now. No. Right. Across the street, the uh, oil company, do they have any? Yeah, there's still some there. There's a monitoring wells, and there's some tanks there. Um, we don't have access to those records, but I, I can tell you, I walked, I've walked up there because you know, we've done some studies, and they've, they've got the tanks there, and they've got the monitoring wells. I thought so, yeah. yeah. Any other questions for Jack and Mike on this? Thanks, guys. Thank and you. Great. Uh, what I would ask Great Jack is uh, maybe every six weeks we can do a uh, a written updates we can update the council and then when larger things come in we put it on the agenda so the council's aware absolutely thank you thank, thank you guys. everybody great okay Katie next uh, well we'll go to number seven which would be our municipal roads report from mr. Whitman if he's here there yep. he is Everybody should have in their packets the uh, the deck. Yeah. Find it. I, and I, I would tell you, I, I heard that suggestion about records reten record retention, record storage. I'll put my hand up at the sewer commission. We'll definitely be like part of that, absolutely, because we have some of our stuff stored here and there. It's secure, but it'd be nice to get it all in one spot, so we'd be an in on that. So I'm John Whitman with uh, the Municipal Roads Commission. Uh, I'm the chairman, and thank you very much for having me. Uh, we try to do this every year as comprehensive as possible. I've asked Jack if he would uh, support with us with any, any uh, questions that you might have that technically I'm not able to answer. But uh, let me get my thing here. On John, April 19th. John, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I see you have members of your committee here. Too. I do, and I, I'm sorry, that is my bad. I have uh, Jerry Lakovitz. Ellen is, is here with us, and thank you very much for supporting us and being here for the vote. Thank you, Pete. That's my bad. Uh, on April 19th and 20th, uh, uh, the DPW and the, and the Municipal Roads Committee, we're going to hold public meetings as we have in the past. And these sessions are to hear uh, things that the residents are concerned about who uh, reside on the roads that we plan for re rehabilitation in uh, 2023. And this year we're going to do approximately 19 miles of roads that are going to be re rehabilitated with either reclaiming, milling, and paving, or uh, chip and fog signaling that Jack had talked about previously. Uh, we want to know specifics about each road uh, and that may not be apparent to us for instance, instant uh, you know, d uh, drainage problems, icy spots, site distant issues. I mean, look at Avery Road. That was one of them that was pointed out to us. And uh, thank you to Jack and, 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 and uh, Mike for their, their work that Avery Road was fixed, that ice dams that were happening right by um, Dunkin' Donuts. And that was one that was pointed out to us. And that was fixed based on one of these, these sessions. So it's very, very uh, uh, you know, beneficial to us. And we're also going to ask for comments and questions to be sent to us with a C-click fix that some of us have on our phones. You can get to it on website. Uh, and they'd be sent to us uh, or on the home page. And resident feedback will be assessed uh, for incorporation to any of the engineering work that's going to be done on these uh, that Mark, Mark Rosa and, and team uh, Jason Hyde are going to be working on. 
Uh, this is what we've done in the last three years. I will tell you that we started about, we're coming into like our sixth year, I believe. And uh, yeah, sixth year. And uh, there was a plan to take all the roads in the town. <clears throat> and with Jack's support and uh, guidance, the, the idea was that we wouldn't let a road go to the point where it was going to have to be not just we'd call rehabilitated, but completely torn up and redone because it would sat, sat for 15 years and hadn't been touched. And what's happening now is, is that the money that's being spent is being spent very carefully and very wisely uh, that the roads that are gonna be rehabilitated are gonna be readdressed in some form of a maintenance program like fog, fog sealing and chip sealing and what have you along the life of that road. So that we're gonna extend out that asset that usable asset a lot farther than we ever have in many years past. And thank you for the leadership that's been allowing that to happen. So we, we, as Jack said, we, uh, we started out about six years ago uh, to do 100% of the roads in town. We started with, the, uh, with the, uh, um, um, the, the larger volume roads and went into the, you know, the smaller volume roads and then into the cul-de-sacs and, and the neighborhoods and what have you. And that's the way we've been pr progressing along. So in 25.18 uh, miles of paved, in the last three years, 27.82 miles in chip and the fog ceiling program at about 3.35. Uh, one of the things we've done uh, to um, um, increase the life, to extend the life of some of the assets in town, we take the sewer, uh, sewer plant, for example. The sewer plant has got a large footprint of paved, and paved area. It has been failing. It's been failing over many years. Some of the, the drainage problems and what have you. And the chip seal, along with the fog seal program, that we've been doing, and Fog Seal is pretty much new to us in the last several years, has saved us from ripping up many, many, many hundreds of square feet of that driveway, and that we have used the town's crews and contract crews to prove that this, this can really, really, uh, uh, you know, not just on, 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 uh, on, uh, on uh, paved roads that uh, the, the, the residents travel across, but even town assets that it can extend the life of a town asset. So where you don't have to dig up a couple hundred thousand dollars, probably, of paved roads, and for about $35,000, we can re rehabilitate them and get another 10 years. So this stuff works. This stuff really works. These are the roads are going to rehabilitate uh, in your packet. Uh, hopefully you have all of these. Um, I know that uh, it was uh, spoken to about Buckingham Road and that is on here. And some of the roads require drainage along with just the road surface. Some do not because the drainage is modern enough. Some of the catch basin tops have been replaced in years past. Uh, the road just never got rehabilitated because of funding. We ran out of funding that year or we had put other roads in, in, uh, in pr uh, priority above them for various reasons. So some of the roads that are, you'll see on here are paving only some of them had drainage work done in the past. It had just been, the paving just hadn't been done. And some of the roads that are yet to be signed, Mine Hill Road, number one, Poplar Street, number one, Prospect Place, and Greenview Road. They're, Greenview, they're still being reevaluated engineering-wise as to what we're gonna do with those. It doesn't mean they're not necessarily gonna be done. We're still evalu evaluating them, those. And this is kind of the timeline. Uh, it's a 2023-2024 program because some of it can done be, be done before June 30th comes around next year and the fiscal year moves on to the, to the next fiscal year. So it is a 23-24 program, but the majority of the work is done in this construction season because the plants don't open, the, con the uh, asphalt plants don't open until the weather gets warm enough. So you really don't do any prep work if you can't pave it. So maybe in the last month in May and June, something like that, we'll get some of the residual stuff that, that are, that's been left over from 23, but the majority is being done this year. One of the roads we're not necessarily going to be able to do, uh, it's still up in the air, is Mill Street. The, uh, the Mill Street Bridge was done many years ago when there was a sewer project manhole covers and whatever, you go across that, it's really beautiful, you come off Grove Street, not so nice, get really nice, and then not so nice again, right? So the not so nice parts are what we're going to do, but we, we have a project that we're looking at for the sewer, uh, the sewer uh, plant, and we wanna make sure, we, you all wanna make sure that we don't pave something that we dig up next year, right? This, we've seen a lot of that going on that just, just, just stresses you to beat the band. So we don't wanna do that. So we're looking at all of these roads and say, is there anything that's going on in town that could impact us digging up a road we just paved? So that's why we put that on there as a big red maybe, okay? Not so it's not going to, but we'll see. 
What did I do? Turn it off? <laughs> did I? Oh, there it is. Let me back, back up. Yeah. It just took a while to load. Uh, you've seen these uh, before, but uh, some of the rough grading, uh, rough grading and compacting, and uh, the reclaiming. And milling is different. In milling, we, we can take off just the top inch. We can take off more than that. But we're not necessarily digging up the sub base and mixing it with the pavement and then putting it back down and raising the, raising the level of the road. We can go a little bit lower if we have kind of a spidery, spidery road and go down a little bit more with the, with the reclaiming without uh, with, the re, with, the, with the milling rather than reclaiming and not necessarily raise the height of the road. Uh, replacing catch basin tops, some of the things uh, like Twin Ridge Road. Twin Ridge Road was paved in this past cycle, and Twin Ridge Road was paved, but not, not, not much drainage work was done because the drainage work had been done in years past, but because of budgetary constraints, the paving wasn't done. So a lot of those catch basin tops were in excellent shape. And that's what you might see in some of the roads that I just showed you. Paving the base course. And uh, paving the top course, we paved the base course, and the idea is to lock the curbing in by putting the curbing on top of the base course. You lock it in with the top course. That way, when the plows go through, I will tell you that we've got some, we've got some artists on our hand. That these, these fellas, they, they employ some real artists. And you go up some of these neighborhoods, and you can't find a scratch on some of these, these, these curbs. You can't find a scratch. How they do that is beyond me. You know, at 2 o'clock in the morning, with this much snow on the ground, and you go by on a sunny day, and you can walk your dog and not find a scratch on that curb. So, but the curb is, is locked in by that top, that top course. That's the way the construction is done. And replacing driveway aprons, you'll see it. And Jack had talked to some of the stuff on Candlewood Lake Road, where uh, we've already done some cutting. And we we'll cut the driveway aprons back. What we used to do is we used to cut them back to a certain, certain uh, level. No matter, what the, no matter what the pitch really was, there was kind of a standard where we would cut them back. And then what we found is that because of that standard of cutting it back, we didn't get necessarily the drainage because the idea is the driveway to the road, not the road to the driveway. Right. So some of them we had to go back. So there's, you know, there's no cookie cutter to do this stuff now. I've seen them out with an eight foot level and they'll go up there and they may go back four feet, they may go back three feet, they may go back two feet, they may go back six feet. But they'll go back to the point now where the residents are not gonna call that gentleman's office and say, what, why is the water going up towards my garage? You know, that's not happening, that's not gonna happen. We've got this thing customized now, thank you to, to Jack and his crew to watch this stuff that uh, we don't, we don't, we're not gonna see those things anymore. If they are, it's a, it's a one-off, it's a mistake. Uh, and backfilling the edge of the newly, newly paved road. Uh, we've had some issues with, uh, the, with the backfilling that is not necessarily the best. We're real careful with that now. You'll see some of the roads now that the grass has turned really beautifully green because there's some high organic stuff in the backfill. Okay, so, so we've learned, we've learned. That's getting better and better and better about backfilling that because that's a big thing. You, know, you get a person with a pristine lawn and you got the two feet behind the curb and then all they got is, is uh, you know, millweed and, and, and dandelions. We're trying, we're trying to do our very best. And, and again, thank you to, to Jack and his, and his uh, team of uh, inspectors that are doing the best they possibly can, and to Mike, obviously. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna remind uh, the meeting attendees to use the cl see, click fix. You can do it on your cell phone. You can get on the website. Uh, and on the Facebook page, we're going to you know, make sure everybody knows what's going on. But if they prefer, they can, they can email, uh, they can call, talk to Naya, you know, tell them what their problem is, what their issues is, who they, can they talk to. Naya is fabulous. She doesn't miss a beat when she gets a call like that. It gets right into our hands. It gets right into Jack's hands. So th it's not getting lost. The phone call is not getting lost. So this is going to happen on the 19th and 20th. It's been very successful in the past. They're not allowed to speak, but they're, but they're encouraged to correspond. It's just a presentation by us, uh, our committee, and, uh, and, uh, and the help of Jack and his staff, uh, so let everybody know, what, know what's going on. Okay. Tell me succinctly, what's fog ceiling? Wait, it, it's, it's a, give, give the technical. There you go. Yeah, we'll get, ceiling is like sealing your driveway. Yeah, but it's, right. but it's a much more hardy product. Yeah. 
So you could take, like we did Littlefield, we paved Littlefield, so within six months it grayed out. That means all the moisture, air, all the oils are coming out of the asphalt. So we put the fog seal on it, and what was that, two years ago? Yeah. Something two, like that, yeah, yeah. and it just, it holds the road together. Right. Does it, fog it, stand for something, or do it, they, they spray it on like they like well, a fog? Yeah, the you acronym, know, but, you know. Yeah. The acronym. Oh, oh I, no, acronym. it doesn't stand for anything. No, it's just well, a, a, a industry no. name. But when you mix it with chip seal, because it's the consistency is so much heavier. If you if you drive by, take a look at the the the, the sewer commission parking lot or the, any any part of it, you'll see a double chip and a fog mix, oh. and and where the trucks run across it. Obviously, where we park the vehicles, park our, our cars, it, it's not as smooth. But where the trucks are crossing, you would think it just got repaved. Oh, good. You'd think it just got repaved. It's awesome stuff. It's awesome. Thanks. Chris? While we're on that subject, I noticed we hadn't done any in the last two years. Is that just because there was no roads that needed it? It's, you're going to see some of it this year, but, yeah, it really wasn't part of the mix. Okay. Yeah. You know, it, other thing I want to say is that um, what you what you all have done the last few years uh, has been tremendous, so, and I want to thank the the road committee. It's a it's a great process uh, that you have. Our community gets involved. You help prioritize things for DPW, uh, and certainly thank Jack and Mike and crew for doing road work the right way. We're not just throwing a top pavement down on a bad road with a bad base. We're doing the drainage, doing the expensive, but doing it the right way. And, and most importantly, or not most importantly, but as importantly, I want to thank the mayor uh, for prioritizing this work because without that, uh, mayors before you didn't prioritize it, nothing got done. And I can't think of better evidence than tonight, the town meeting we had. I remember the first one we had for this. This place was packed. They couldn't get into the room because people were so concerned about our roads. And I don't think we had one person here for that part of the meeting tonight. So I think that speaks volumes for how the community has responded to what you all have been doing. So thank you. Thank you. Hiller? I, I agree. I think this is the, the plan is excellent. I've been watching them on, you know, for a few, last year and this year and the plan and what, what you're going to do and how you're going to execute it and having the public meeting. It's all really, really helpful and great. Um, I just have a question about the, the costs of it all. Um, so I'm trying to wrap my head around, um, you know, next year and how we're paying. Because I was just looking at the, you know, the last three years, and what it cost the town to do it. So I came up with about it was about 24 million. So I'm just wondering how, you know, if we can look to what did you say, 18 miles this year we're going to do, or uh, nine? No, 19, 19, miles. 19, 19 miles. 19 miles. 19 miles. So the, over the course of those three years, I think we did. 56 miles, is that right? Sounds so, right. Yeah, 56 miles. So, and that was about a $24 million bill. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. So, and you, we bonded $2 million for this, for this year. budget this year. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm wondering if we can talk about the cost, how that makes sense for three years, $25 million, and then. Sure. Is it going to be the same going forward? Is that a uh, sort actually of Actually, I'm speaking with Jack, and Jack can talk a little bit more than I can on it. But we had, especially in the beginning of, of uh, this program mm -hmm. we had roads second hill road i mean these had to be full depth reclamation right. 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 because they've just been avoided for so many years so now that we're getting to the uh, yeah. more of the roads that don't need that type of uh, real in-depth type of construction work mm -hmm. you're going to see that number fall but hillary as that number falls now we're going to have to ramp up the bridges because we have depending on what you call right. a bridge, anywhere from 62 to 70. Mm -hmm. So the goal is to continue to use the cash flow <laughs> to, collate, to create a flat line and then use those funding sources from roads as we're doing the different treatments and then switch that over to the bridges, which are much needed. I know Jack can talk a little mm -hmm. bit more about it than I can. Yeah, and, and yeah the, uh, as, as, Peter, as Peter said, in the beginning of the, in the beginning of the project of the program, uh, there were roads like uh, uh, Second Hill, uh, roads like uh, Pickett District, mm -hmm. uh, roads like uh, yeah, Long Mountain, 
that required a full depth reconstruction. Full depth reconstruction in some of those locations mm -hmm. went as deep as 14 inches down on the ground. Mm -hmm. It went 14 inches, and that's extremely expensive work to do. Problem was is that when, you, when we started doing the cores, the core drillings, you know, every once in a while you do a core, you come up with sand. You wouldn't come up with anything that was compactable. Mm -hmm. So you keep going down, and you're finding nothing compactable. So what you're doing is you're taking all of that stuff out, and you're bringing in all virgin stuff from another location. And that's extremely expensive. That was at the beginning of the, and there was the, that the cost per mile was like you you know a million, million two. Now it's nowhere near that. But that's why we spent so much money in the beginning. We did the worst roads with the highest amount of volume, mm -hmm. and then that started going down. So it was like it started here, and now it's doing this. And that's why it was so expensive in the beginning. Okay. Yeah, your numbers are right. You know, about six million dollars a year yeah. and this year you'll start to see that that curve bending um, we're also prioritizing rows you it, when John showed the slide it shows uh, you know reclamation mill and pave chip seal fog seal we now we, we use a tool to say okay which road requires to do a reclamation right. uh, which road to, can we just do a mill and pave on mm -hmm. which road can we just do a chip seal on and that way we're able to continue to maintain the number of the miles of roads we're doing we're also trying to transition now i think i've spoken about this before where we're transitioning away from getting as much rebuild as now getting into a seven-year cycle where every seven years you touch a road mm -hmm. and touch it means that, you know crack seal it chip seal it fog seal it so that you get a 20-year life on the road and we're not spending as much money on totally rebuilding now buckingham that's going to be that's you know that one's just, that's a given. But like some of the other roads we'll be doing this year, you'll just see like the uh, ones in the south end of town, those are a mill and pave. We'll go and we'll take one and a half to two inches off, and then we'll just put another, go right down, put that on there. It's a much less expensive, but again, it's a very effective way of, of maintaining a road and giving you that life that you need. Okay, so of, of the 30% of our roads that we've done, the 70% remaining aren't as in bad condition. So right. it, you think that's six million a year is? is yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. Any other questions for John, Jack, Mike? Thank you, Jack. John, and thank, thank you and the committee. We can't see yeah. your committee up there, thank but you yeah, you really changed work. the way things have been done. Thank you, everybody. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, speaking of roads, um, item eight, road closure. Um, 8A, I'd like to move to accept the following road closure. This would be to close Bank Street. Uh, for the following dates, this is for the Rock the Block concerts the Bank Street Investment puts on. They close the road from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. And that will be on May 25th, June 15th, July 20th, August 17th, and September 21st. There is rain dates for I, I, all of those. And this is pending traffic authority, of course. And then 8B, do you want, mind if we do these together or do you want to? Yeah, okay, good. We'll go to 8B. Uh, Mama's Tacos is requesting closure of Church Street from Main Street to the parking lot behind Town Hall. Uh, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. for Cinco de Mayo. That would be May the 5th, and that too is pending traffic authority. Any discussion so on the closure? Second. Do we have a second? Chris. Have a second. Yeah. Chris seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Great. Uh, I'd like to move uh, that we move on to the spare housing resolution, but um, I wasn't gonna make a motion for any action at this time. This is what we do every year, this resolution. Oh, this is the resolution. This is just I'm a sorry. resolution. Okay, let me get that out. We here. do this every year. Okay, now the resolution, excuse me, that I am gonna move that uh, we approve the spare housing resolution, which we do every year, and uh, this must be, the complete resolution has to be read into the record, is that true? Uh, we can ask Randy. Where is well, he? I'm at? looking at this memorandum from you. Yeah. It says recording. It just says recording it, but you can read it if Do you want. Do you want me to? Uh, sure. Okay. So this is the fair housing resolution. Whereas all persons are afforded a right to full and equal housing opportunities in the neighborhood of their choice, and whereas federal fair housing laws require that all individuals, regardless of race, color, religious sex, handicap, familial status, or national origin be given equal access to all housing-related opportunities, including rental, home ownership opportunities, and be allowed to make free choices regarding housing location. And whereas Connecticut fair housing laws require that all individuals, regardless of race, creed, color, 
national origin, ancestry, sex, marital status, age, lawful source of income, familial status, learning disability, physical or mental disability, sexual orientation, or gender identity or expression be given equal access to all housing related opportunities, including rental and home ownership opportunities, and be allowed to make free choices regarding housing locations. And whereas the town of New Milford is committed to upholding these laws and realizes that these laws must be supplemented by an affirmative statement publicly endorsing the right of all people to full and equal housing opportunities in the neighborhood of their choice. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town of New Milford hereby endorses a fair housing policy to ensure equal opportunity for all persons to rent, purchase, obtain financing, and enjoy all other housing-related services of their choice on a non-discriminatory basis as provided by state and federal law, and be it further resolved that the chief executor of the town of New Milford or his or her designated representative is responsible for responding to and assisting any person who alleges to be the victim of an illegal discriminatory housing practice in the town of New Milford, and for advising such person of the right to file a complaint with the State of Connecticut Commission on Human Rights and Opportunities, which is CHRO, or the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, or to seek assistance from the Connecticut Fair Housing Center Legal Services or other fair housing organizations to protect his or her right to equal housing. This is adopted by the Town of New Milford. We would be today, which is April the 10th, 2023. And this should be signed and sealed by our mayor, Peter Bass. And uh, Randy, is this background the... Is that a motion, so is there a second? Is that... uh, yes, Chris did the second. The fair housing resolution, this is an annual thing, no changes. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. Just as... a motion we're... and a second, and Katie had read that. Uh, so those that are watching, and uh, Stephanie has a copy. Uh, do we have any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Okay. We'll move on to item 10A. Um, I'd like to move to approve the appropriation of $40,000 of Amer ARPA funds to uh, go to Camilla's Cupboard for the children's lunches that uh, she will offer during summer vacation. Second. Second. Thank you. And uh, just real quick, can you could pass these down? Two, three. These two. Uh, I'm going to go over that one second. Um, Mary Jane. So I'd asked. Uh, yep. I had asked uh, Tammy Reardon, our grant writer, to go through the uh, the ARPA funds. And uh, according uh, to her calculations now, um, we have approximately, with the silo funding that was approved at the town meeting tonight, mm -hmm. uh, we have $92,602.13 left. And uh, according to, to Tammy, we did have some funding that uh, is actually going to be given back because of the lower cost than what was bid out. and. Uh, uh, Fifteen thousand six hundred and twenty-five dollars uh, differential was for the Sullivan Farm main barn roof replacement. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was uh, a savings. Forty-two thousand six hundred thirty-four dollars, which was the Harrybrook Park temporary bridge. One thousand four hundred thirty-five dollars and ninety-five cents given uh, from the community ambulance capital equipment. Eleven thousand nine hundred eighteen dollars and ten cents to the Water Rich Fire Department capital equipment. $602 for social services freezer for the food bank, nine cents for the Northville Fire Department capital equipment. Um, so that uh, was a total of $72,215.58, combined which was what was left, leaves us the $92,602.13. Um, and uh, speaking with, uh, as background, speaking with Angie uh, at the uh, Children of the American Revolution, we were talking uh, about the need. We've seen significant uptick both in Carmela's, where she's pretty much capped out in uh, being able to serve more. We've seen over a 40% increase in food bank usage uh, at uh, our social services one. Uh, also, the Methodist uh, food bank has also seen an increase, obviously, as the economy has shifted a little bit. 
And the big concern, as it has always been, is uh, right now everybody has got a free lunch. But once school ends, right. there's going to be a big segment of our population of children that will not get a hot meal. So Angie, I'd ask Angie as she's done before, is there any way that we can uh, help assist as we've done? That's how this, how, mm -hmm. how we really initially started this with, with the town mm -hmm. uh, doing these lunches. And she said, uh, yes, I asked her for a budget, which I'll provide uh, more in depth. But it came to about $40,000 that Carmelis could provide the service for us for the children. So one question. Yep. So I see the listing for, uh, but every, all the applications that came from uh, anybody, this is the ARPA funding now, the Correct. nonprofit, the businesses, that's Everything's all. Everything's in there. Yep. Yeah. It's all account. Good. Mary Jane? I just want to say I think it's a great use for the money. I think it's very important that these kids get fed all Come summer out. long when they're growing like crazy. So um, are they, is it going to be like a box lunch or? I believe it's going to be like a before the box lunch and I think mm -hmm. she had it where it could be a couple of days that they right. could have it. Mm -hmm. They pick it up all in one day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I can have her uh, opine a little bit more of what would be in those boxes. I think it all depends on what she can get. Mm -hmm. But I know uh, history repeated that's what they did uh, prior to. And, and New Milford families. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, so this is for one summer. Yes. Then what? We'll see what happens. And then we have to... Well, talk to your legislators. Uh, ask them why they're not willing to uh, give us a continuing, continue the lunches for kids in school. You know, I don't really understand it, but maybe you could get somebody to tell you why I'd... <laughs> what's more important than kids having something to eat. And I, I agree that something long-term we have to look at. Hopefully... You know, with pressure from the council and the public, uh, they could do the funding, as uh, uh, Katie had said, that allows for, you know, some some districts have uh, have schools open during the summertime for lunches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. So That's maybe right. there's an opportunity to do that. But I think now is to really provide that need and then gives us at least a year to kind of figure out a game plan after that. Yeah, since it's a growing number. Absolutely. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Great. Uh, item 10B, uh, we have discussion and action on the creation of an opioid settlement committee. Uh, do you have, does everybody have paperwork on this? So the opioid, this is, yeah, this is just something to talk about. Yeah. Uh, as we talked about a little bit before, we have Randy here too. Um, the opioid settlement fund is uh, created, was created by the um, phar pharmaceutical uh, settlements. We're going to get about $67,000 with that. Uh, tonight, I'd just like to get a sense from the council as, uh, as far as the membership, how many members we think should be on this committee. And then the charge, obviously, would be with this committee to bring back to the town council their recommendations for uh, appropriations for the use of the op opioid settlement funding. So I would like I, to then make a motion. Okay. I wasn't sure that you wanted to do it. Yeah. So uh, I'd like to move that the council approve a uh, formation of a fair rent, rent commission. Wait a minute. Okay. So, no, fair rent. I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong. <laughs> I'm writing and reading. Let's back up to the opioid settlement committee. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. We need to put spaces between us. Uh, 10C, uh, this, here we go, okay. <laughs> I'd like to move that we approve the formation of a fair rent commission. Second. Two, three, four, five. There we go. Just, uh, I don't know if everybody has a copy of the working draft. I've also attached, and thank you to uh, Chris and Hillary, is they, I had asked at the last meeting if they had anything that they'd like to opine as far as the working draft. That's included in your packet here. Mm -hmm. And if we could talk a little bit about Randy, can you talk a little bit about the, uh, we'll start with the membership. The recommendation that you made was for five members. If you could talk a little bit about that. Sure. Do you another well, one? The, the actual statute states that the number of members in the company shall be five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then the second section is really up to each town. I found that in my discussions and in my research that most towns who have these have five, including Hartford, which is a large city. 
And the reason for that, when you discuss it with uh, attorneys who are, are in those towns, is they wanted to try to, to extensively, extensively, make extensive attempts to keep politics out of it. And the, um, the consensus of the attorneys that I spoke with is that you want somebody who's a property owner, you want somebody who's a residential tenant, uh, and you need, you need some legislature, you need a legislator or two on that, and then a third party citizen at large. That's the recommendations that I've heard. Uh, it makes sense to me, and that's why I've drafted it with a five member panel. And of course you need, you need alternates as well. Uh, Randy, can I ask a question? The sure. first thing you said, um, a property owner, but meaning a landlord. A landlord. A landlord. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's to bring both perceptions. You don't want to make this uh, a, a, a free-for-all. Right. Essentially, you want to appoint thinking, thinking people to this. It's worked pretty well in, in, in the, the cities, that the attorneys that I've talked to in, in the larger cities. One of the attorneys said, when you're talking about towns or small cities, the jury's going to be out for a while because, mm -hmm. because of the... the the l lack of, of bigness, if you will, right. things to compare it to. Because as you know, as you could read in the, in the statute and in the ordinance, the factors are pretty clear and they're defined, they're standards. Mm -hmm. You can't deviate from those. And it's, it's much easier said in a, in a large city, a large diverse city where there's different properties and different, right. different types of properties than it might be in a, in a smaller town. When I, one of the attorneys I talked to said, well, the Milford's not really that small of a town. And my, my statement to that, well, it's, it's, it's not New Haven. I mean, there's not the same, same pockets of difference, if you will, in New Milford. But in any event, that's the challenge of the commission. It's a commission with teeth. I thought the ordinance has teeth um, without being odious. But I do need some feedback before I draft do a final draft. I really so do. Randy, some of the questions that were brought forward I'd like to go over them sure. and then open it up to the council after sure so you talk about the membership I'm sorry Hillary. I just with all due respect I had no idea we were talking about this tonight because it wasn't on the it wasn't in our packets and it wasn't on the agenda so I'm not prepared to like really dig in and have I mean are we trying to to, to come to some sort absolutely of absolutely not okay thank this you is just thank questions you. thank you absolutely. i thought it was a work in progress got yeah it, got it yeah okay. um so one of the things is when you talk about the if we were going to go with five if the council says that uh i know you spoke one being a landlord one being a tenant right you also recommended town council yes a legislator so obviously for minority representation you need one from both parties exactly so you're at four exactly. And then you'd have one person at large. Exactly, and that would be my recommendation anyway, even if it wasn't minority representation. Right. Because you have mine, thinking people on both. Too. Well, I don't mean to be blasphemous here. Right. So but you that, have thinking people on so both. So with sides. that being said, if the council was to decide it was five members, would we would the final document actually put in to the to the document exactly like you said? It would consist of a landlord, a tenant uh two council people both from the parties and then an at large would you recommend having that embodied written absolutely okay and that's how we did it with the youth commission yeah. right i think that the the um you know the nature the, the 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 point of the commission is to be as apolitical as possible. exactly absolutely so my recommendation would be not to have members of the town council on it with in opposing parties. I think it should be made up of community members that are very vested in housing, you know, maybe social services person, um, balanced on R's and D's or whatever. But I think that it's meant to stay out of that political sphere and be an effective um, body within the town. Thank you. That's your that's your decision. The reason the reason this has been recommended and we talk about this, the lawyers talk about it, is because of of, of accountability of the legislative body. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's that, that's a question I would that's like. That's your ask. call as a policy issue. I agree 100 percent that you don't want this to really have any. Uh, just I mean, let's face it. If New Haven and Hartford can do it, we can be able to do it. But how do we have accountability if we don't have any legislative presence? I don't know. 
I don't know. You can have a report to the legislative body, you. Uh, but the fact is, is that this commission has independent authority, aut autonomous authority. Right. right. Uh, it doesn't answer to the legislative body. That's why right. the conventional wisdom, this is I not see. my wisdom, this is the lawyers who, who have these in their towns or and cities, is, is, that the, is to have is legislators that on. what has been done is being done? Generally, yeah. Okay. Um, again, I say generally because I'm not saying every town does yeah, that. Yeah. The cities no, I that I talk to in have your... legislators on their, okay. on their uh, board, on the commissions. Any, from anybody else, any questions so far on this? I mean, we're going to keep hashing it out, but. I just have a question. So? We don't have to have five people. We can have six, seven, eight. Right? It's up to us. Whatever the, whatever the council feels. Yeah. It'd be uh, tough to get a consensus, Sal. So. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, if you want to represent. You, you, know, you could have as many as 13 if you want. And everything goes in between. You have more people, basically. But the reason I say this, just to, to, to answer that question tangentially, is because. Uh, the, the lawyers that I spoke with okay. are city, big, bigger city lawyers. And they said five. Hartford has five okay. on there. And they, they generally get things done. And the alternates that are mentioned here, the three alternates, which mm -hmm. obviously that's a good idea. Um, but, you know, we have alternates and lots of commissions and things and means different things. So in order for an alternate for something like this, we'd need to be sure that they were also fair-minded. They have to be pure of motive, as one yes, of the lawyers Yes, exactly. Right. That's that, right. So um, that, that, also <laughs> that also presents an issue. The reason but, these alternates are so important and they're stated in here, this wasn't really my idea to say, to say that detail, is because they're such a powerful commission. Mm -hmm. So, and, and alternates are going to have to act because you know everybody can't make every meeting. That's right. Um, it's this is a powerful and when you envision the alternate what segment right. would they be from would they be would they one be a legislator would they all be That's community be large members as a policy it would be rare that all the alternates would sit at the same time right. i mean hopefully it's rare but um but you can make it a legislator or you can make it a non-legislator you can make it a, a a landlord and another tenant as alternates I, I do recommend that you keep those categories intact for alternates mm -hmm. because you need that balance. Right. And I, I'm, a, I'm scared of these things uh, personally because it interferes you. with I'm the right to you. contract. I yeah. have heard of other towns creating an ad hoc committee to, because this is not, this is not easy, because it is a legit, with teeth, you know, commission. I think that it's going to, I find it very difficult to be able to hammer it out. Is it any, anyway, my suggestion is maybe to see that other towns have created ad hoc committees to really dig in and look at who could serve on the committee and create the committee. The you could do that. The, the problem is you have to have this done by July 1st. Right, I don't know that we have time, yeah. Of course, you could, you could create the committee and then people it really good. So, so Randy, so this committee would be it. They make we, a decision, we, it's over. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's, well, it's appeal. appeal to the Superior right. Court. R right, but no, nothing in town. Not administrative. It goes out of town This completely. has the force of law. Um, but I, so. I do see the merit in having it a smaller number of people because there's, you just could go on and on and on and on if you get too many. You don't want to grid a lot. Yeah. It, well, seven, Governor Malloy, when, when he was uh, a Stanford, he was a pretty good lawyer. And um, he talked about these things are very delicate and you have to have the right model or you're going, you could potentially create people with axes to grind and people whose yes. oxen are bored, his words, and you could create slums. Mm -hmm. you, could, you, could, you, could, you, could, you could inhibit investment. Or you and could create, very well in or you could create the opposite of that, which would be Because, because of the crisis in housing. It worked very well in Stanford, where yes. Governor Malloy was, was uh, Mayor, not well. I didn't hear that about mm -hmm. Mr. Molloy. He, he's not liked in Stanford at all. Oh, no, I understand, but this That's works. why he went to Maine. He doesn't live in New York. <laughs> no, he doesn't, doesn't live in Connecticut anymore. But this, this program worked. Okay. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, this is meant to be a remedy for... It, it is a remedy. You know, bad situations for tenants, for, for landlords, and to keep it out of the courts. It's, 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 it is a win-win if it's done right. And there are ordinances that are very specific so they walk through absolutely mm -hmm. all the steps which take some of the guessing and some of the how do we do this out of the commission's hands and puts it in the ordinance up front 
So it loads the it loads the to dos mm -hmm. up in here, right. and then it, it takes that off the commission, and it, it they really just follow the process, mm -hmm. and they they listen to each argument with fair and rational minds, and then they follow the. I argument. understood, but there two could be two thirds, right? The one the landlord and the renter. That's the balance that we have to go right, and the commission is basically saying has to judge somehow on either side. And so. The, the definition of fair is what I have a problem with because it depends who you speak. Good to. question. That's a very good point because the commission has the authority to strike a deal, right. and the commission has the authority to authorize increases in rent over time. It's a broad, broad authority, and as pe uh, the mayor and I talked about when this first came, I said this is this could be a disaster. Exactly. But it could also work. Yes. It could also work. It and, but which one is it then? You know, it could work. Here. Well, yeah, it, 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 it's got to be done right. Yeah, and that's why this ordinance is the, the working draft is drafted the way it is. Um, but you'll notice we enumerated every every step, every factor in that ordinance is, is enumerated. Every factor in a statute that's considered in an in an appeal to the commission is is articulated. Right. It's in the ordinance, so there's no there's no uh, you know shooting from the hip. There's right. no making it up. Well, it's akin to being, you know, ruled by a statute. You know, it's right. just you, you, your personal, inf whatever you feel, kind of goes out the window when there's a statute that says this is how you're going to approach right. it. And that parrots uh, the statute, essentially. Uh, well, so that goes back to one of my questions that I put in. I, I see two. I'm trying to go back to the questions I sent in. Um, so um, the commission find. So the commission has to find an increase to be harsh and unconscionable. Right. Right, in order to, I, I in order guess, to adjust it. side with the tenant. Um, and they have to come up with fair and equitable. So that, to me, that's the two levels. There's fair and equitable and harsh and unconscionable. That's right. And it seems to me, Nothing now there's no real, neither are quantified, but it seems to me there's a lot of gray area in between right. those that's two. That's at first right. blush. You're doing the same thing that I did when I reviewed these. There's no standard. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, a, it's, it's, it's essentially subjective, but it isn't. Because if you take a look at the criteria, the criteria sets forth the standards to be considered, each of which can be analyzed and if, you take a, if you have a thinking commission. Mm -hmm. Many, many times in Hartford, appeals were not granted. Okay. It was not automatic. Uh, and Dal uh, one of the attorneys in Hartford said it, it, it was really pretty, pretty eye-opening that some of them just were not granted because it was fair and reasonable. It was, did not shock. He said they used the term shock in Hartford. Right. Does it shock you? But and what we have here for in terms of landlords and tenants and the opportunity for both to own and to live in is a way from way different than what happens up in Hartford. Absolutely. So I, I look at this as almost being more it's tougher because of the fact we don't have the number of any particular type of the issue diversity. You're right. that you know there's it's right. very important what happens because it could be one of three times that could happen where up there could be one of 50. That's what Hillary was talking about the different categories. Yeah, no, I, yeah, no, I, I, we don't have all those categories. Here. It's right. going to be difficult to, to do. I think you could ask somebody to come in to speak to that point because you could you could ask somebody in social services um, who who fields all the calls from tenants if we don't have tough situations happening here too. So I think oh, I feel a lot of calls from people yeah, who are tenants. I mean, you know, yes, so no, tenants. I, I'm not saying that it's it's not important to get information from people. I'm just kind of surprised as I read through this that you've got Hartford. Bless you. Bless you. You have Hartford and you have New Milford, and someone says, "Well, it's not really a small town." It might not be small, small, but really, when you look at what we are talking about in livable, rentable units compared to city, I, I guess have small towns uh, done this to your uh, knowledge? And uh, no, no, we, this is new to the small towns mm -hmm. because don't forget, this is the first time it's been applied. To any town over twenty-five thousand population. Yeah. So, but yeah. But so, no one's completed no. their. Uh, no, I have a number of requests to help them out <laughs> by other towns, assuming, assuming some of my towns had this. None of my towns have this. Okay. New Milford would be the first one. 
Um, so, so, Randy, a few other questions. So, Section 912. Sure. Uh, they talk about, at least the way I interpret the commission, having the sole discretion to determine if a property doesn't comply with an or a municipal ordinance, state statute, or health and safety standards. Shouldn't they be obligated to have a determination from another, say, an expert party, municipal or, or state officer or health inspector? They can require it, but it doesn't say that in the statute. Right. In the it state says statute. that they have the right to make a finding if, it's, if it violates one of these, one of these precepts that the commission itself, that's why it's a powerful commission, has the right to actually make a finding. Even if they have no expertise. In Absolutely, really. right. God. Well, any questions? So uh, when the renter... Uh, hang on. I'm sorry. Hang on. I, I, yeah, I'm not, I got a few more. Um, section 913, what weight does the cease and desist order from this commission have? It's, it's, it's a weight of law. It's a force of law. So they give that. If it's, if it's not uh, being adhered to, then they call the police and the police... Ha well, they'd have to appeal it. It would actually have to go to court first mm -hmm. before the police could take action because you have a due process issue okay. at that point. Okay. But yes, it has the force of law. It's like, it's like when, when CEO Regan issues a cease and desist on a zoning matter. Okay. Um, section, what's labeled 912 on page 4, but I think it really should be 914. Mm -hmm. I typed it myself. Um, so the fines are between 25 and 100. Is there any sort of guidance on no. how that'll be determined. No, that's the statute, it's right? Really. Every day it continues is, is, a, is yeah. a separate fine. Okay, and then section 913 on page four, which should, should be, be 915. 15. Um, will some or all commission members be expected to testify as part of the appeal process with the Superior Court? To testify? No, it's a record appeal. Mm. It's appealed on the record. So so the evidence is, is what it, what the record shows us. Um, it would be essentially a, an administrative appeal. Gotcha. Just like we do a zoning, somebody does a zoning appeal, nobody testifies. Gotcha. The okay. record appears and the judge reviews the record, the lawyers write the briefs, and then lawyers argue the case. Gotcha. That the record supports their position. Okay, all right, good, thank you. I'm done. Hillary, can we go over yours? I just haven't compared, I don't know what I have in front of me versus what I sort of suggested, so I can't, I probably have a lot of questions, but we'll check it out. You, you might you want you, it, for the next meeting. You might want to take a look at the statute. And the statute seven dash one forty eight B, and it also and refers. You're not going to make me read more legal language, are you? <laughs> uh, no, but you also it goes from seven fourteen to one forty eight. Yeah. Yep. And um, I, again, I type this, so it's not really very. Yeah, well I didn't want to bring up the typos. Um, <laughs> Does anybody have any further questions for tonight's meeting to Randy concerning? I just have oh. just one question. Can a homeowner be on the commission? Absolutely. As an alternate or as that fifth person? That would not be a renter, large. not a landlord, but a homeowner that, large that person? lives in this town. Sure, as an at-large person. And that would be somebody that's going to be unbiased. Yeah, but the, as, 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 as you alluded to, the recommendations to have a tenant a landlord and legislators that's just a suggestion this the mayor and the board the, the the town council decides how this is going to be people does not have to be that i'm I'd just like telling to see you some of the alternates be uh land yes and, well, you know, can, can be property owners and if we don't have to, then what? pardon me if we don't have this body by july then what that there's, there's no I don't know what the penalty is because it doesn't, doesn't say so in the statute so a but I tell you what I tell you will happen though you're going to get you're going to get contacted probably by uh, by the uh, by Department of Housing yeah, right. if this is not if we don't get this done and we don't want to violate violate the I'm not saying violating no, if we don't get it done we'll be violating it though <laughs> Katie uh, never mind I did find one okay. yeah so in nine nine the complaints um, so a lot of I'm just wondering why the language a complaint filed by, by an individual or a consolidated complaint by two or more parties mm -hmm. but that that that's you have it just as an individual well an individual a, a two two or more parties are comprised of two or more individuals so yeah. that can be changed that's not a big okay. deal but don't forget make that change what you're talking about is, is is when there's an apartment house four or five right. people so yeah. if, if more than one sure 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 one tenant in that unit has a complaint yeah they can come they can sure like it says they can um two or more parties residing in 
or on property owned by or managed by the same landlord or management company must be filed in writing and delivered. So it's just that option. Yeah, I hear you. One or more, yeah. That's not a big deal. That's no problem. In fact, that's the statute. Any other? Okay. No, it's okay. I, I just, you don't have any way to gauge or to give us any idea of smaller towns or even the cities. Let's use Hartford. There are five with three alternates. Mm -hmm. What legislative persons? Uh, do they have? I don't know. I don't know. I do oh. know they have legislators, but uh, uh, okay. city council members. And don't forget, Hartford's a little different too. They have a different charter. They have a um, a strong mayor, and they don't have um, necessarily. They don't have a lot of, uh, if you will, volunteerism, to to use a, to lack of a better term. Well, yeah. In, in Hartford, which is sort of why the legislative person, because. At some point, someone has to be responsible yeah. to the people out there, and they've got to take it. They've got to take this seriously. This yeah. is a big. Yeah. This in, you understand the constitutional issues here. This interferes with the right to contract, mm. it, and and it's important that this be this be considered that way. What, what do you know? Just quickly, what was the reason that they decided to bring it down to a smaller population? Town? I don't know. I did see the legislative history, and it was very weak, if you will. It's mm. about time. Uh, this is a statewide issue. This falls in line with uh, 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 desegregate Connecticut and things of that nature. They mm -hmm. want to make it more affordable for all economic right. strata. Well, from the yeah, the that's diversity important. inclusion. I mean, that's right. important stuff. So Those are all mentioned, but nobody put their finger on this is a policy reason. Okay, thanks, Randy. Well, they're expanding. They're expanding. Any other questions I'm tonight, sorry, Hillary? That's my last question. Sure. I just can't find where it is in the. Um, in this but I remember I had the question in your draft it was um, there was a constraint on um, there was a constraint on the budget you know the lawyer the the, the, oh. the, the amount that it's going to cost right. so there was a constraint which is I have not seen that in any of them so I, you know and other ones that I had read so I wondered where that where where that came from me come. what that probably came from me right so that in other words, it's not when 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 you it's a limitation. when you when you budget this, it's mm -hmm. got to be within a budget. It can't be, you know, you write a check and it's going to blank check. Mm -hmm. So that probably the language I put in there. I, I can't find it either, mm -hmm. Hillary. But there's going to be a budget constraint. It can't be a it can't be a blank check. So would it be the lawyer? Would it be the town lawyer that we could would, be the town lawyer? That, or it could be a special attorney appointed right. by mm -hmm. the town to do this. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is is what I would recommend. And so zoning. Do any other commissions or com, does anybody else have a budget constraint in our oh, yeah. in our town? Oh yeah. yeah. All, so all zoning. All of us do. All of yeah. So they have a ceiling of how Believe much me. they can spend on legal fees. Oh. Unless they come to the town as we've done before and ask for more. And ask for more. Yeah, they all have budgets. And being, a, I'm sorry. Just I'm just thinking of all the things that being a town of this size brings into play that maybe didn't in the city, you know, such as attorneys, you know. How many pro bono attorneys we have here? Zero. Oh yeah? I do well, a lot of pro bono. Yeah, 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 I know you do, I know <laughs> you do. But uh, just the saying is that it, that's why to me it, it just seems it's just night and day well, in so many of, in, yeah, in yeah, some of the, well, you know, in a city there are, there are firms that actually have people, as you know, who will do that type of thing, and it's a good way to get. Yeah. People representing cities for free? No. Not in my experience. No, 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 the, the bereaved renter. Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, well, Jim Hirschfield, my, and, and frankly, to, just to take issue with what you said, my partner Jim Hirschfield had a statewide he does. award for the amount of pro bono work he does. I think I even, you I know that. You might remember that one. Well, I take it back. I didn't mean anybody at Cranberry. Well, this guy but, works a lot. But in the scope of Afraid. our town and the number of attorneys per capita, if you will, as opposed to Hartford, I just. It's, this is going to be another unfunded mandate. I just, yeah, it probably is. Yeah, yeah. Well, we use the lawyers for a lot of important things. This is a, you know, yes. this is an important, you know. Certainly is. is. Oh, I'm not so, saying we shouldn't pay yeah. for it. I mean, but that's what I'm 
if it's it comes to, to create that. a budget for it. Mm -hmm. You have right. to create. You have to have a budget for it. Yeah. First of all, it's it's an enforcement entity. This is a, it has the force of law. They have to have they have to have a lawyer, and you need a budget for that. You don't want us a lawyer. Hire a lawyer to say whatever it costs. You need a budget for it. Right. For that this is an important. This is like it's like a zoning commission lawyer. Right. It's incredibly important to do that. Uh, or it's or it's a commission that doesn't have, you know. Not everybody hates lawyers, but I tell you something. Until you need one. Oh, I don't hate them. And, uh, uh, I love lawyers. This, this, this you need. One. You have right. a motion. Yeah. We did. No. Yes. Withdraw table. Yeah, this is just discussion. Yeah. Just withdraw, yeah. Right. I'll you withdraw my on, motion. work on, on the or, any particular things you want me to work on, Ernest? I've got them from Hillary. I th yeah, I just... Um, Can we send it to you? Yeah. Yeah, I think there might have been a couple things in the questions I sent. Yep. Just uh, the mayor will forward Great. my comments to you. So. And then any other ones forward, we'll send them to you, Randy, and then... Sure, we'll, and I'll draft up This will be on the next, next agenda again. The, this will be sure. on the agenda. What was distributed tonight? Was that different than what was sent to us before? Or was it, it was this initial yep. draft. Okay. Um, Absolutely. Same. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, same thing. Chris, did you yeah. withdraw your second? I did. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Randy, we'll get those questions to you. If you have any other in the council, we'll send them to Randy, <coughs> and then we'll circle back at the next sure. meeting as we keep working through this. We'll get it done. Okay. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Randy. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, item 10. Uh, C1. C, that's right. 10 C1, which I added, was uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we have a uh, propose a date for the annual town budget meeting. Uh, suggested date would be May 2nd. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? And item 10D, uh, like to uh, prove that we set a date for the town's municipal and board of education budget referendum. Suggested date is May 16th, 2023. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, everybody. Oh, I forget.